Hello, all of you puppets out there, and welcome to the stream. I am Razim, currently as the professor. And today, we are working on the Rao system. However, in probably about an hour now, uh, Mirai will be joining us on stream. And that does mean that art wheel commissions are open. So go ahead and get your names on the wheel and we can see who wins. These are commissions, so do let me know if you want on the wheel. Details are in the Discord in the ZGF Art channel. Uh, you can check the pin uh, post in there for more details, etc. It is $77 for color and $33 for lines. Alternatively, you can, of course, just tip to the channel and get on the Doodle page. Uh, the Doodle page may or may not be done tonight. It may be uh, done by Hex. Uh, it depends on who's available, but we'll see. Shade is good. Shade is a good yes. bean. And hello there, Duke. Welcome on in. All right, so one thing I wanted to start with today, we're going to switch songs because I don't want lyrics right now. This will work, even though I've played it like 15 times already tonight. I wanted to start off by reading some stuff I've added. I wanted to add a little bit more personality to the... Uh, system it was something that i was planning to do later on but people have been poking and prodding and insisting that the system needed a bit of readability and personality so i expedited the process i don't know why they kept saying that by the way we're like by the way this is a uh this is a shitty whip document please do not comment about formatting we know half the comments hey your formatting is bad I'm aware I have the same argument on that, but they won. I got tired of it, so here it is. <laughs> All right. All right. So, to begin with, we have... Actually, we need more fitting music. Uh, we'll go with our custom tavern song. That'll work for this. Beginning with stories. Stories are what bring people together. Folklore and legends are what shape people of all ages. They impart wisdom or simply bring enjoyment. From the labors of Hercules to the serpent biting its tail, even the simpler stories of the humble customer service representative. These stories are intriguing. They live with you, and sometimes they even live beyond you. However, you know what the best stories are. A brief pause hangs after the rhetorical question is posed in the small campsite. The gray-haired speaker that calls himself a gnome leans against the wheel of his wagon and puffs on his pipe before he continues. The purple smoke swirling above him and almost seeming to take shape. The smoke forms into what Hunter's mind interprets as a table surrounded by chairs. The best stories are the ones made with friends. Another puff of the pipe interrupts the speaker again. This time, the purple smoke joins the table, still somehow floating there and small objects settle on the table with the chairs being filled with other two-legged creatures. 
One of them is at the head of the table, a raised partition before them. Grieve speaks again, a warm smile on the gnome's face as he looks down at the pup kneeling next to his leg, watching the smoke with rapt attention, ears twitching at the words. There's an imagination that can only be fostered with friends, one that we're all born with, one that should not be stifled, but instead allowed the room to bloom and grow. The pipe is puffed on again. The character at the head of the table in the lavender pipe smoke gestures emphatically. Despite the small scale, it's plain that those gathered at the table are listening eagerly. One of them picks up a die, and Hunter could swear he heard a clicking sound as they shake their hand and toss the object back on the table. Echoing cheers ring out across the campsite as the roller and their friends around the table throw their arms in the air in celebration. The one behind the screen leans back. A sense of satisfaction at a story well told is felt from the faint, wispy smoke. These tales spark that creativity. They breathe life from the imagination infused in them. There's a reason why all those many creations stand the test of time, commanding the attention from childhood on through adulthood. It is the imagination that they bring, the stories they inspire, the reason you're here. To relive that childhood imagination, to make stories with your friends, to triumph through adversity in fantastical ways, to hear your hard-working storyteller ask you, how do you want to do this? To be those companions you've held near and dear to your heart for all these years. The strange creature gives a satisfied smile, puffing on his pipe while those at the table above reshape, going from their forms before to animalistic creatures on four legs or two legs. One even becomes a ball with two oval, two half-oval objects attached to it. Hunter shakes his head, his mesmerized gaze breaking from staring at the purple haze as an unexpected quiet hangs in the air to look at Greaves. He speaks in a quiet, stuttery voice. What, 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 what do, do you mean? I'm just, just uh, escorting your c c cart. The gnome is quiet for a time longer before he looks down at the hyena creature, a knowing smile, smile crossing his features, and he seems to look through Hunter as if he were looking into another world before he speaks again. Oh, my apologies. I'm speaking to the other you. Hunter tilts his head in confusion at that, but he gets the sense that the gnome creature would not divulge the secret of what he meant by that. So, what'd you all think? It was pretty good. I liked it. I kind of wanted to, you know, get that little kind of introduction to the system. You can't believe I gnomed you? It's a little gnome. <laughs> You've been gnomed. <laughs> now, the next section I have not finished yet. But I am still actively working on it. Well, not right now. Uh, 
All right, so the other section, like I said, is not finished yet, but... Hello there! Welcome to the world of Pokemon! My name is... Oh, uh, hang on, wrong script. Uh, let's see. Uh, ah, here we go. Ahem! <coughs> d, 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 d Digimon, Digital Mon... Er, well, that's the wrong one, too. Hmm. You know what? I'll just wing it. Wait, is this thing still recording? Oh dear. Well, I'm sure they can fix it in editing. They do have editors, right? Anyways, for the editors out there, I'm starting now. Hello and welcome to Other Worlds. Some might call this the multiverse. There are some obsessed with going to the moon that I've been told would call it a metaverse, though I really don't think that applies. But anyways, I am Greaves, gnomish merchant extraordinaire. Owner of Greaves Adventuring Co., Greaves Artifacts in Sunrise Emporium, Greaves Wagon of Wonders, and many more. I'm sure you've heard of me. You found this... Mm, I'll just record a few different versions and you can insert the proper term for the world they found this on here. Book, tome, manuscript, clay tablet, and you're wondering what exactly you've stumbled into, right? Well, so am I. You may have been born the way you are now, or perhaps you were, as some mortals say, isekai'd by truck into this new body. Either way, you are here now in one of the many, many other worlds. These worlds are inhabited by a truly endless amount of varieties of creatures. Some may have yellow mouses capable of wielding lightning bolts. Others have quadrupedal robotic wolves with enough guns built into its body to conquer 90% of the Earth in a matter of days. Disclaimer, Greaves Other Worlds Exploration League is not responsible for misplacement of new forms in inappropriately power-balanced worlds. Please blame truck -coon. On behalf of all of me, myself, and I at Greaves Truck Coon and No Clip Simulations, we welcome you to your new home here in the other worlds. Good luck and make a grand story. Right, now that the stuff for them is out of the way, hello players! Yes, I'm talking to you. No, no, the other you. Wait, you're not supposed to see past the previous paragraph. Right, that's been fixed now. An actual hello to you players out there, looking to play as your favorite little holy potatoes and monkeys with fire butts. This is the Rao system, a system designed for playing all of those various critters out there from the many different, very popular, and not so popular, and completely custom, franchises across the many completely unrelated worlds out there. This system is designed to allow you to play Pokemon, Digimon, the monsters from Monster Hunter, and any other special critter you may want to play, while keeping things as balanced and standardized as possible with such a variety of chaotic entities that definitely would not normally mesh together at all. And that's the end of what I've written so far for that. Thoughts? Bye. <laughs> uh <clears throat> I, I feel like we're gonna have to have like a little bit of a better transition at some point between the the two section thingies but you know at some point well i mean i will say that they both have a uh, title at the top of the page you now you got stories and you got other worlds yeah. I don't know what other uh, transition we could have. It just feels a little bit awkward to have it end off with Greaves talking and then it start up on the next thing under a new section with Greaves saying hello again. Well, you know, like, I guess not Greaves talking, but, you know, the whole thing with Greaves being there and then going hello there in the next page. Well, yeah, but I don't know what I could put between them. I, I mean, mean yeah, I will, that's I, I, 
I will say I'll probably have a page in between them that's just got some kind of graphic in the vi final version or something. I mean, yeah. Just to clearly, you know, separate them. Also, I am personally just proud of the uh, chapter one page that I wanted to specifically leave blank. Um, but instead I put here, this page originally had a really awesome and cool piece of art on it. But unfortunately, a Rotom got into the server and deleted it and all backups. We're sorry you did not get to see it, but we assure you that it was a truly epic work any museum would drool to get to their hands on. Just as a placeholder until we actually have art. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could, could also do a, um, uh, we, we tried to ask Porygon for help, but we couldn't afford a commission him too after the truly wondrous piece of art oh I, I was planning to have a different blurb like that for each chapter ah uh, okay <laughs> but yes I was planning to include Porygon in one of them But yeah, I wanted to keep this page mostly blank, so that way, uh... Welcome back. Your steadfast loyalty is greatly appreciated. Right. Actually, I guess I shouldn't Through do this. Through if Fru just resubscribed for 10 months. Because it looks like Seda will be joining us here soon. And he'll All be right. doing his own stream, so I'm not going to feed audio through Discord. But hello there, Fru to Fru! Thank you very much for that resub and your 10 months of support. That adds another point to our September goals. So yeah, I hope you guys liked the uh, little intro section to the Rao system. I am very, very happy and proud of it. And that pride is uh, very shaky and easily shattered by the critical and uh, harsh uh, feedback of the public. Mm -hmm. Not really. I know I did a good <laughs> job. But I do still welcome feedback. Yeah. All right. I know you also, I just remembered that at uh, some point you wanted me to go over my personal creative process for world building. Ah, yes. Well, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, you want me to start right now? Okay. Why not? Oh, right hold on. Then. Hold the line. This hamlet shall not fall. Chrysov's raided my stream with four viewers. I have been blessed this day. I have been truly, truly blessed. The Eevee has come to join us. Here's to Hello there, Chrisovs. Thank you so much for that raid. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you. Hello there, Archu. Thank you for that follow. Welcome in. You were playing Packeret down the Bunburrows? What? I am so confused. But anyways, hello everybody, welcome on in. I am Razim. And uh, today we are working on our Rao system. 
or role-playing animals in other worlds. This is a tabletop RPG system for playing as Pokemon, Digimon, uh, monsters uh, of all kinds, shapes, sizes, etc., etc. And yeah, we're just going to have a nice time with this. And then eventually, uh, uh, roughly an hour still. Uh, Mirai will be joining us this evening. Or at least should be joining us, provided nothing goes wrong. You guys know how life can be sometimes. Uh, but they will be joining us for an art stream. Oh, so that's why I got a raid from Chris Ovs. Yeah, he had to gang up with me right tonight. I see, I see. Ah. The I know he is playing innocent. Yeah, I I know your plan, Chris Obbs. And you know what I have got to say about that. Wee wee. Yeah, I got four of those bad boys to bring up. <laughs> Chris Ops, give me a wee right now. A wee. Dad. Really? But yeah, if you all would like to see more of those abuis, go on over to Krisov's channel, where, well, he does the abuis. And of course, you can use those sound effects at any time to bring up those uh, adorable sound effects. It is exclamation point, Chris, one through four. We have four of them. Anyways, world building stuff. Let's go, Taldarius. Yeah. But yeah, so um, uh, I don't really have like an original name for it. And uh, this is like obviously the very like basic and implementable by other people system version of it. But uh, what I do is I uh, come up with a and this is what I'm developing, obviously, like a new area. Uh, and I come up with a list of 10 things. Uh, they can be... Um, Features of the area, events, people, um, plots, things like that. Things that the care the players can interact with. And I come up with ten of them. Uh, that's my minimum. Sometimes I, like, you know, when I'm just writing it up, I just have more. So I end up, like, with 15 or 20 or however many. But my minimum before I, like, uh, before I even work on anything else is ten. And then what I do is I find a way to link number one to number four. For example, I find a way to link the two different, uh, two of the different things. And I keep linking additional, uh, additional little areas and things with, uh, plots or other things of that nature until everything is linked somehow with everything else. So, like, for example, number one goes to number four, number four goes to number seven, and number seven goes to number ten. So one is tangentially linked to ten now. And then and the I focus on stands alone. Yeah, but um, th then I focus on making sure that everything has as many direct connections to other things as possible. And if you imagine the um, uh, like you know, sort of like the numbers, uh, like the, instead of it being like a list, imagine it like in a circle with the um, with the connections being literal lines. What you end up seeing is that I'm uh, effectively making a net or a web. And what that means is wherever the party in all of their chaos goes and lands their little dart and tries to get through, there'll be a connection there to catch them, and it can go anywhere. So, for example, if there was... Um, uh, I know that I was helping out someone recently with it, and they wanted to have it be that the um, that there was a plot where... There was, um, uh, someone had to be escorted into a forest 
uh, to make a deal with the um, the fake creatures living in that forest, and then there was another party that wanted to stop that from happening. So you know there was a bunch of um, uh, of little ideas like that that they had, but they didn't have a way to connect it in. So I used uh, this process in order to help them connect it in. And what ends up happening is, is it means that if the party decides to get distracted and go off in whatever direction, uh, then it means that there's always something to lead them to pre-planned content. In, obviously, a very reasonable way for the world. So I don't have to, like, scramble and choo-choo the player. All I have to do is go... Oh yeah, you know, um, if you do, if you land here and you follow it to like the closest interaction point, there you go. It, it, it's right there. Um, and one good example of that is when obviously you wanted the twins to be little construction workers, and that led to an interaction point, which was uh, Jakovich, because you know I went okay. Well, what sort of jobs would the uh, construction worker uh, Randy have? Who? Obviously, wasn't really like a planned out thing specifically. Obviously, I'd already planned out that there was like construction people there because why wouldn't there be? But then I went, okay, well, what sort of jobs would they have had and what sort of important things could be there in general? And I figured, you know, uh, based on what I had already written for the Jakovich interaction plot point, what ends up happening is, is I go, oh yeah, his place was pretty banged up and damaged. It makes sense that he'd be trying to hire out construction workers to fix up his place. And so that leads to a lot of, uh, that led to a lot of emergent storytelling where I didn't have to choo-choo the players in order to, like, inter like introduce them to a bunch of new uh, plot points. Uh, I didn't have to go, hey, could you stop being construction workers? I just went... All right, looking at my list of things here, where's the, where's the closest little interaction point that was already made, and which path that I've already strung together can they follow in order to get to the pre-planned content without me having to, like, you know, come up with some bullshit. So basically, no matter where we decide to pull on the thread, we're not unraveling it. We're just winding up with the entire line and... It just, the line just keeps going and going and going. Yeah, and if you keep yanking, you're not pulling it apart, you're just pulling more and more plot points towards you. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, when you're done with, uh, with those ten, and you think that you have them about as closely together as possible, because one of the rules is that you're not allowed to make new ideas or content until it's all strung together. So, like, for example... Um, instead of coming up with a uh, uh, with a with a new plot point to add to the list, instead you have to figure out a way to make the current ones make sense with just the list that you have. So that way, you know, you're not doing that thing that people love to do, where they have a bunch of unconnected random things they thought of and liked the idea of, but they never actually tied it in with anything. So it's like, okay, that was a cool one-off fight or a one-off interaction. But 10 sessions later, where is this going to lead? Or five sessions or even next session. And it doesn't lead anywhere. So if you pull on it, it just breaks everything. And then if you want to start developing other areas and new areas, what you do is you come up with the 10, the, the 10 item list and you fully develop that area. And then that's when you start stringing the, uh, the things together between the first area developed and now the new area. So that way, you know, there's a connection between the two things and it's not just some random nebulous floating point. It anchors it down into the world and it gives it a very reasonable um, pathway to follow logically without having to think about it for why the party ends up in the new area. Because, you know, when it comes to the new area, there has to be a reason that they're going there. Of course, it could just be as something as simple as the next town over. And that's a very easy and simple thing to put together. But uh, what this also does is it makes it seem like the world is very, um, the, the term that I like to use, it's a very living, breathing world. Where it doesn't feel like you're like going through an epic, episodic, week-by-week -week adventure like Monster of the Week. Which is very, very perfectly fine and fair, and if you want to do that, you don't have to connect in the, 
the the webs together. But if you do want to make a fully fledged sandbox area for your uh, for everyone to play around in, that is the simplest solution to uh, for me. Obviously, there's um, little bits and bobbles that I've um, customized to myself to make it work, and I would also encourage anyone that wants to try it to do the same. Uh, this is just the core underlying principles of it. That way, it makes it so that way there's little tiny details wherever that the that the party can find and appreciate without you having to on the spot improv during your session and have it be something that may fuck you over a lot later. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's other things where it's like, you know, uh, focus on like small interpersonal things along with your big giant uh, fun plots. Uh, because again, like one of the one of the big purposes is to make the world feel like you know living and breathing and real, and so you know, interpersonal problems or connections or anything can lead to um, even bigger and more important uh, things for uh, like you know people feeling connected to their characters than fighting the big bad evil dragon and slaying it. But uh, when it comes to world building specifically, I try to focus on the 10, having at least 10 interaction points in any given area in order for the players to, like, you know, have more than enough to hang around with. And whenever they go off into left field, there's just more content there instead of there being a massive gaping hole because I didn't expect them to go there. Actually makes a lot of sense. Yep, and that's um, the the basic process that I follow in order to make it feel, you know, nice and interconnected. Because, uh, like it was mentioned, whenever you guys start pulling on threads, there's just more thread there. It's not like you're going to rip it out. Oh, and this is also why I'm so confident that if you guys decided to, like, fuck off and just leave into the middle of nowhere all of the sudden, I would still have content for you. Because yeah. Because we have multiple of these set up, so... Well, yeah, what do you what do you think? I definitely think it is a good way to do it. In fact, I might have you write the uh, uh, storyteller chapter for this and explain that uh, in text. I mean, okay. As a matter no, of fact, a... we'll add it now. Okay. Uh, we'll add it after this. Yeah, it should be after all the rules. It should be, like, you know, just before the index. Damn it. Insert. Page break. And this will be title. Oh, I apparently changed all the titles to. Oops. Oh, well, that'll work. Rawr, <laughs> lightning dragon. Rawr. Very rawr. Like, oh my god, rawr. Rawr X3. Ooh, woo nuzzles. All right, enough being trashy. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, 
that's uh that's my process uh i got it personally down to where i can like throw together like a massive web very very fast but that yeah. is how it is done for me at least I like it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if anyone likes the idea of it, just go ahead and, you know, yoink. I mean, we're adding it to our storyteller section, so by all means, they're meant well, to yoink it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I, I'm just saying, before anyone even gets it into their head to ask if it's okay to, like, you know steal the process yes just take it because i've wow. had people in the past when i've um uh like talked about it with them like have asked me specifically if it's okay to use it and i'm like yes that's that's why i'm telling you about it feel free to rifle through what all of what i've said for whatever loose pocket change advice you feel like taking Uh, Mango MCR, uh, the, the problem with that is I know literally nothing about Digimon. Also, I'm already, uh, uh, I'm already going to be kind of full up on being Storyteller. Yeah, it's looking like he'll be running three games here soon. And that's just on this channel. I'm not going to be running any other games anywhere else, really, but I am playing in other games. Also, yes, Merle, the count will be going up to three. One of which will be a uh, Star Wars game, because I'm a massive Star Wars nerd and I love the Star Wars uh, RPG systems. Specifically, I'm going to be doing the uh, Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, Force and Destiny, the uh, Fantasy Flight game systems. Partially because I also love the um, absolute amount of storytelling, uh, like emergent storytelling uh, devices that are there through the um, Triumph system, the Despair system, uh, the uh, Light and Dark side destiny points. I feel like I might try to do the uh, the um, the persistent version this time. That would be interesting. What is that? Uh, okay, yeah, so, yeah, I forgot you weren't paying much attention during the uh, massive, like, hour-plus talk I was given about it with Ragon. Um, okay, so there's something called uh, the Destiny system in the in the Star Wars RPG system, where the way that it works is um, there's light side and dark side Destiny, and um, light side is able to be used by the players, and dark side can be used by the storyteller. Oh, hey, Santa. And... Hi, Santa. Hello. And uh, the way that it works is the um, the players are able to use it to do things like introduce narrative facts. So I know the example that's given in the book is like, um, you know, the uh, the players crash onto a planet which they expected to have a breathable atmosphere. But due to like, you know, some sort of accident, there's a lot of toxic fumes in the air. And uh, then they spend a light side point and uh, go, hey, it's a really good thing that the last time, insert Quartermaster character, was in the uh, was in the escape pods last time, they made sure we had working respirators. And then the storyteller finds that to be an acceptable narrative fact to introduce, and the point is spent, and now there are respirators in the escape pods. Ah... Uh. However, gee, go gee, gee golly, I'm so glad I packed my Darth Vader killing laser. 
<laughs> yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't fly. But uh, <laughs> but the the um, the other so end of it is that when one side uses a dark side, uh, a light side or dark side, it flips to the other. Oh, so that means that you then get a dark side point to fuck yeah, with. The obviously, I don't with. need it. I don't need it to like introduce narrative facts, for example. But I could use it for like. You know, you guys managed to break a bounty hunter's weapon, but then I flip one in order to make it so he had a backup weapon ready all of a sudden. Like, gee golly, I'm so glad that Darth Vader turned out to actually be Hunter this entire time. <laughs> On the plus side, um, in Legends lore, there uh, were fake Darth Vaders that were made a little bit. We're just going to Scooby do this. Let's see who, are, who you really are behind the mask. It's just a robot. It, it's Shade? <laughs> the Zora? I, 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 f f find your lack of f f f faith d d d d d disturbing. Intimidating, yes. But yeah, and then there's also um, things um, like triumph real quick. and despair. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, because Taldarius doesn't, it didn't uh, point this out like he usually does when Darth Vader is brought up in relation to this Star Wars system. Uh, literally, uh, there are no stats for Darth Vader. It is just simply every round he kills a character. Yeah. Um. Like I thank 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 God we have, you know. 1,000 nameless NPCs that don't have families that care about them that is between us and Darth Vader. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> Am I using the system right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there, there are actually allies that you're able to get, but, you know. I'm just not gonna lie. I knew. I know. I like. I'm Ow. stretching the, ab like the idea behind the mechanic. But I just love that the mechanic such as that it's in there, where the storyteller says yes, you can actually just make something happen. Yeah, uh, there is a version of um, Darth Vader with uh, actual stats, but um, specifically, it does. Uh, uh, it, it does. He does basically. Uh, there's a version of him which is narrative Darth Vader, where he just kills a player every single round. And then there is the um, allies and adversaries version where he is statted. Uh, th this is an extra source book that's like, you know, people wanted actual Darth Vader stats, so they got actual Darth Vader stats. Uh, and uh, if you aren't... Uh, if you aren't um, force sensitive, he does just kill you. Okay, also, he look, give, gets give, to force give, choke you for free. He doesn't have to spend give, an action to force choke you. Give Gab, I didn't say anything about innocent families. I just said that you know a thousand NPCs that didn't have anyone that cared about them. So we precisely would not be thinking about the families. Also, Merle, uh, you missed an anvil rain earlier. I do things brought that about. I do things did okay. things. Okay, what if we turned it into like a thousand death row inmates? Does that make it better? Does that make it morally acceptable? Yeah. It's a good thing uh, that we found this convenient lever that unlocks all of the death row inmate... Uh, Cells that happen to be just underneath us. Though, actually, I will, I will align with Gab on this one. Capital punishment is still bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, okay. Oh, actually, you no. Know, maybe we can just make it so, like, everyone who dies in the next like ten minutes doesn't actually die; they just go comatose for like a day. I do know that if Darth Vader hits you, if he has a total of three advantage, he'll have enough critical rating to straight up decapitate you right away. Uh, good. It's a good. It's a good. It's a good, it's a good thing. There's a new medical procedure that allows you to reattach severed heads without any consequence. Yeah. 
<laughs> like <laughs> I'm me, sure me, back me, to tanks will fix that fix that right up. Me me realizing that there's absolutely no saving the scenario and you know this party's absolutely screwed. You know, just start making the new character now. Oh yeah, no. If Darth Vader shows up, you should just write off the characters immediately. Unless you're sprinting away as fast as possible. Uh, it's, a, most, it's a good thing most, I deve just develop super speed. Yeah. The most likely scenario is that it uh, turns into the uh, into the storyteller uh, describing the end scene of Rogue One. I, I mean, should just that scene just be like in every storyteller's like pocket, just be like, okay, there's no words for I described for what's happening next. Instead, I have presented a video essay. And it's just a scene. Okay. God, I... I wish that. You what? You first. Oh, I, I was going to say, I wish that uh, we had had that kind of uh, stuff in the original movies. Oh, it would have been so cool. Because. <laughs> Let's be frank, we kind of don't see anything from Darth Vader in the original series. He is I mean, lame. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but he had such an intimidating, like, presence that people thought yeah. he was badass anyways. I mean, like, I would, um, I would not be opposed to more scenes where people are, like, woefully outmatched just as a means to communicate. Yeah, yeah this person is very badass. It's like, yeah, you kind of need like a a Jedi to go against Dark Vader because, like, you know, you know, just like dart here with a blaster, not gonna stand a chance. Oh yeah, one thing that I think is funny is that Palpatine has rules for if a character is close to falling into low morality and is around him. If wow. a force sensitive character. Hmm. He, he can literally, like, he, he has corruption rules in order to, like, corrupt you to the dark side. I, I will say, a lot of people focus on the fact that Anakin killed uh, younglings. But if you watch the movie, it does have several scenes of him actually fighting full-on Jedi. And not only that, but there would have definitely been the Temple Guardians that he slaughtered there. Yeah. Like, he killed a literal army worth of Jedi. By, okay. Yes, he had clones to back him up, but let's face it, it was basically by himself. Yeah. Well, you know, in Legends, he has killed entire planets by himself. Um, also, I am ready to start my stream. Go for it. We shall be silent for you. And if you aren't silent, I'm going to have to put you in timeout. Which I guess in this, for in the context of this conversation, is just going to be the Pokemon box. No, no, we have uh, timeout channels here. Yes, but are they on the same level as the Pokemon box? The Pokemon box is just depression. But you want to know what's worse forgotten. than... You want to know what's worse than that? What? A Gen 2 Pokemon box. No. Oh. I'm afraid I do not remember that enough to know the reference. Forever stuck there. The furthest generation can bring a Pokemon up from his Gen 3. Oh. And even then, that's kind of a tenuous situation at best because uh, with the... several systems. <laughs> yeah. We know, the good thing is that Pokemon Bank is now free. The bad news is that it, the reason why it's free is because the Nintendo eShop shut down in March, which means that if you didn't already had the program downloaded, uh, you can't actually acquire that software anymore. 
I made a terrible discovery that I thought I had downloaded. I didn't. So all my um, all my Pokemon um, from Gen 7 prior are kind of stuck where they are. I mean, if you do want to bring them up and we meet up at a con again, uh, I do definitely have it on my 3DS. So I, I can might transfer take them over offer. and uh, trade them to you, uh, you know, through the Switch and such. That would be appreciated because the only other option seems to be um, going through through some some sites to um, acquire software. Yeah, my 3DS is uh, actually uh, part of the Ambassador program. Huh. Granted, I transferred that from the uh, original 3DS to the new 3DS, but... Yeah, I am I might still have to go down the route of forcing the software onto my 3DS. Um, because, you know, of that terrible thing you told me not to do, that I'm still doing. Getting all your Pokemon in the uh, Moon Balls and uh, Living Pokedex thing? Precisely. Oh, God. <laughs> well, because see, like the... And Hidden Yargle. I still need to actually get all my pings out. Because um, see, the beautiful thing is that it's actually really easy to get Moon Balls in Gen 4. So, hey, I have a copy of Pokemon Heart Gold. If I can just, like capture a lot of the gen one through four Pokemon that are available in the game in moon balls, I can then transfer them up and not have to worry about like Nintendo, you know, deciding, hey, we're not going to put like a uh, Blitzel and Zipper Striker in the game for like three generations. Also, the, the caption bot is making me hilarious because I, I just see like Oak Mound Park as the caption as a poster, like Heart gold. <laughs> it's amazing. My heart gold was broken. Oh no. The uh for some reason it never let me go back to Kanto. Like I did everything right. Uh I even restarted it, and it just never would let me go to Kanto. Gib Gab, I, Gib Gab, I will say that, uh, yeah, in, in Nintendo, uh, Jim Sterling has plenty of videos on that. And also, Skylar, you're a first to welcome on in. And yeah, I'm not going to outright say anything that, you know, could potentially be incriminating for um, future Seder problems. But um, yeah, I do have to look at alternatives to trying to get bank on, on my 3DS. Mm-hmm. And how are you doing tonight, Skylar? Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, I, I just wanted to point this out because of how absolutely ridiculous this um, this ability is. But uh, Pal uh, Palps, uh, the, the Sheev, is able to do something where he's able to make you believe something untrue or adopt an emotional state of his choice for up to 25 minutes per influence check. Good lord. And also, Skylar, that is good to hear. Zila, thank you for the bigger boop. Oh, I I'll be ready to go here proper in about 
three minutes and then you can kind of get me caught up on um um oh john thank you for the pet and hello um yeah and when i'm ready to go um you can kind of get me caught up to speed on where things are at in terms of the document and where what you would like to work on or at least discuss about yeah uh I, I will say that apparently Darth Vader is able to show up if you metagame accidentally. <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of the ways that he shows up is, uh, quote, a PC accidentally reveals force powers or a connection to Luke Skywalker, and word gets back to the Sith Lord. Vader makes a surprise arrival to capture the individual for interrogation. <laughs> How dare he Meta is. Meta gamers get fucked. <laughs> How dare he is. Focus. You're supposed to be writing the world building section for the storytellers chapter. I will. It's like. I, I will. It's fine. It's just I'm also writing up a different thing right now. Fair While enough. Occasionally flicking back to this to improve my mood of seeing that apparently Darth Vader is anti metagame. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. I love that. So, the, this where you just are getting inspiration to write a mechanic in there where the player's metagaming too much? Like, Arceus literally just descends from the sky and just zaps you with, you know, whatever that signature move is? Judgment. Divine judgment, I think. I think it's just judgment. But yeah. I think it is just judgment. Ar like Arceus descends from the sky and judges you. And and yeah, Gib Gab. Uh uh Gib Gab says, I love when media becomes literally unpurchasable or unobtainable, and you can still be in legal trouble for trying to obtain it through alternative alternate means. Like, bruh, I want to give you my money, but you literally aren't selling it. Why are you complaining about it? I agree. That is why I am so grateful for the Internet Archive. That oh, yeah, whole yeah, project is... It, it needs some serious protections, and it definitely needs to be uh, embraced more. I mean, you just archiving and archiving in general like yeah i i actually distinctly remember uh, and i know this is kind of a deviation from our intended discussion tonight but like Dude. i distinctly remember when i think it was hbo literally axed like probably like a quarter or a third of their streaming services um one of them including you know things like infinity train that was on cartoon network it might not be an hbo it might be getting them the 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 different mega corporations mixed up but like you know infinity train was completely gutted from the internet you know cut from its streaming service all social media mentions of it were wiped basically it's if as if from you know the you know the providers that were hosting the show as if the show never existed um and you had the creator basically come onto twitter and be like yeah no like, here's... I actually don't think the creator actually shared the Google Drive, but, like, there was, like, a Google Drive that had all the episodes <laughs> to be, like, yeah, no, please, like, share it around and watch it, because, like, I have no power here. Yeah. Also, it, Demonic, you're a goose, not an owl. Yeah. You're a goose. Don't try taking, uh, Wostein's position. Um... It, for me, like, I hope nobody goes back and watches my original streams on the channel. But I still treasure the fact that they are still out there on YouTube, that they are still in existence. Like, I never watched them. Uh, they were terrible, absolutely awful. I would go for 30 minutes or more without saying a single freaking word. Um, <laughs> but 
I don't want them to be gone either. That was the most crushing part about when my channel randomly got banned on YouTube was just the fact that all of that history was gone. Again, they, they came back. I still have no idea why it got banned in the first place, but the, it, it was still, you know. Doesn't change the fact it got banned for no reason. Yeah. Exactly, Merle. Uh, they're a part of our uh, part of my history on the channel here. I would back up my whole channel, but I don't have the money for that much hard drive space. Considering a lot of those videos are, you know, 20 gigabytes each, that adds up real fast. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome on in. Hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. Make yourself comfortable. Enjoy the chill vibes. Goose, I, I will say the main reason that that, that I am so... That that, that, that uh, scared me is just the fact that I don't know what I did. Or if I even did anything to cause that. That is the biggest difficulty on that for me. For all I know, I didn't do anything. Everything I did was fine. But... The end, it was just some random glitch in their system. But of course, they're never going to admit that. They're never going to say so. I mean, why would they admit anything? Yeah. Also, if anyone would like on the wheel for tonight's art stream, let me know. There's $77 for colored and 33 for lined. Also, if you would like to use your sable crowns at this time. Already heading ahead. to the store. <laughs> Oh, damn it, I'm not logged in. Heckies. <laughs> As others are rushing for it. Like, I gotta go! You're, uh, you're lucky that I didn't want to get uh, art this time, because uh, Zim did a call a while ago, so I could have been on there before anyone even thought about it. Well, Seda would probably go, I'd assume Seda's going for the lines, and you, you've got enough for just outright color. Yeah, I mean, I also do have enough for outright colors, too, now. Oh, I think I oh, could get outright enough. color a couple times if I wanted to. Yeah, it's Taldari just debating. Taldarius takes crowns instead of uh, his cut of the tip goals, so he's got a lot of crowns to work with. Yeah. Well, I do that so that way you can have the FUD. And I appreciate it. Scout, I think, for the boop. 
Um, hmm. Lines are colored. Lines are colored. I could get um, color art about four times. I can only do it about two. And I'm only ranked 16. <laughs> I'm ranked 30. Hmm. But the question is, what do I want? Well, you were talking about a second part to that last one you got. This is true. I need to get a second part to the one that I got a while ago. Damn, both are going to be lab coats. Like, okay, do I just have like a dart and oversized lab coat or just have a follow up to that previous one? Uh, dart and uh, lab coat is also an option. I mean, you could uh, use that to expedite the whole darts notes thing. Just saying. Uh, choices. I don't like choices. And the reason why I don't like choices is because, like, if I do the follow-up, I'm just going to do the lines because I can, like, recreate the background that I put on it. But if I just do the dart thing, then, like, I'll just go for the colors. I mean, for that, I will say that if you go with lines for that, I will upgrade it to colors for free because, you know, it's for the RAW system, so... I'll nah, no, nah, nah, I'm, I'm using the colors. I'm using the colors for that one. Okay. Grr. I'm <laughs> not going to tell you no. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm offering to cover part of it. <laughs> no, forbidden. Okay, okay. Shut up and take my coin. <laughs> I mean, Orca... You could possibly get that started tonight, just saying. Mirai will be joining us very soon, and they're going to need some work to get started on. <sighs> Actually, they do have work to get started on, but, you know. Yeah, more work after that. Exactly, Merle. The thing that I'm going to be having Mirai start with tonight is the... Um, they're going to be doing the... Uh, some backgrounds for... So basically, uh, I, I, I know I've shared this off stream, but for those here on the stream... Um... I will be doing different colored backgrounds. E each chapter is going to have its own color. For chapter one, it's going to be purple based uh, because of the introduction of Greaves and the purple smoke uh, thing in the stories uh, section. Which if you guys want to see Greaves, I did post his art in the Rao announcements channel on the Discord. Um... Porker, thank you for the boop. But I'm just going to have Mirai do one background, uh, the chapter one background for now, and we'll use it for the whole back for the whole document until later on when we're ready to actually properly start getting things going on all of this. Ready to work. And there is Seda's line redemption. I was like, you know what? The like and rock follow up's the easier idea. Anybody else want on the wheel?
You want anvils and fluffies. I see, Gip Gap. Before he even said the name, I knew who said that. <laughs> oh, I think after all that distraction, I think I'm finally ready to begin my stream 20 minutes in. Oopsies. But, um, let me just do my very quick, quick, super quick, not so spicy intro. Go for it. I, I, I don't know why I was saying quick and spicy, but good evening, everyone. Happy Thursday. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Apologies for the late start and apologies for the deviation of schedule from Baldur's Gate 3. It was just, um, I was getting a shower and I'm like, wait, Zim's working on the tabletop system tonight and Tal Darius is in here in the call. Like, when's the last time all three of us are actually able to be in a call to work on this tabletop system? So, yeah, I didn't want to spoil Zim on Baldur's Gate 3. So, I'm going to be chilling with some city skylines. We, we do some tabletop talk because, um, one of the big focuses on the system at the moment is the fact that it just needs to be a bit more readable, which is one of the things that I've been kind of jumping a little bit, so I would feel very bad if I was not present here for this entire discussion. Cities Gate 3, yes. Wait, that sounds bad. That sounds like some... <laughs> that just sounds like some controversy. Cities Gate. It's like... But the third one... God, what, what, what happened to the first two Cities Gates? Uh, those were your last two birthday streams. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it uh, just two years that you've been destroying the city for that? Three! Oh! So I guess the third one survived and now you gotta finish it. No, they all got destroyed. Clearly not. It seems that some of them lived, went underground and survived and have been rebuilding the city behind your back. You know what? That's reasonable because the first one, I didn't do a good job. Oh, so it's like the, the first one. Okay. See, the first one lived. Um, mo Actually, no, it didn't live, but like I didn't go so as far as like I did for the last two years where I just made sure specifically that we had zero population. Which is incredibly difficult, by the way, I have to add, because I swear there's like a baseline people want to move into your city level. So if there is a road that has a zonable residential space, someone will move in. There could be no utilities, no water, no electricity, you know, not even a road connection to get there, but someone will move in. It's almost like apocalyptic survivors just like trying to find shelter. So you basically have to launch, like, you know, 200 meteors at the city to, like, get rid of all the roads. Also, Robert! Yeah, so... <laughs> sorry, oh, I just want to answer Robert's question here. Uh, you just let me know that you want to be entered on the wheel, Robert. Uh, fair warning, the wheel is a commission. So you will need to pay for the art if you get, the, if you win the wheel. Uh, the art is $33 for lined and 77 for colors. So those prices may be adjusted. We'll see how things go in the near future, but I think they're okay right now. All right, Robert, I'll enter in the, I will enter you on the wheel. Do make sure that you are here. Rules are in the Discord. They are pinned in the ZGF art channel. So, but yeah, the entire reason why I'm streaming Cities tonight, not B Baldur's Gate 3. Tell me where we're at with the with the document, what needs to be worked on, or more importantly, what... um. What need, what kind of needs like some discussion feedback on? Because that's kind of the main reason why I want to be here, just be able to like help bounce ideas and have a discussion, even if I'm not like able to actively work on the document. So right now, I am basically working on rewriting all of these bullet points 
into uh, less obtuse things. <laughs> That that's uh what we're that's what I'm working on tonight. Okie dokie. Um so when I do finish a section, uh reading it off for you would and getting feedback on that would be good. Um if we wanna work on actual systems instead. Yeah, well, I think more of the, like, as you were kind of pointing out, the document cleanup is important because, um, at least, like, when we were discussing things the other day, like, I feel like if we, like, put a little bit of work into the document cleanup, then some of those systems that might need a little bit more touch-up or explanation kind of become a little bit clearer. Yeah. I do know yeah. the only thing that we really have to, um, like, actually figure out what the hell's happening with it is probably hit stun. That is one system that we need need to rewrite, yeah. The which system? Hit stun. So, hit stun is basically, um, it's primarily for like against bosses and such. But the more you get hit, the less you're able to properly defend against the hits. Uh, this is especially useful, like, if you've got a boss that is just using Brace over and over, they've got a whole bunch of integrity, and so they are taking no damage. The hit stun overcomes that, and it also gives a balance to the Brace and uh, Dodge thing, because, you know, if you get players that just have a huge amount of Dodge or of Evasion or Integrity... They just take no damage, and if they use taunt, then they're the only ones getting hit. You, you, I'm, you can probably see how that works. Mm. Yeah. Uh, not to mention that it only really is very punitive against evasion, because um, th so there, there's been a little bit of rules revamp that has changed the uh, the balance of hit stun. Because basically, imagine that. Uh, Hit stun, evasion, and integrity all formed a triangle. Uh, hit stun would punish evasion users who would, um, you know, obviously be attempting to avoid all damage, but integrity users would be able to basically ignore the hit stun. But now that we've changed how evasion and integrity works a bit, now we also need to change it so that way it balances for integrity as well. Hmm. And also just to answer a question in my chat, Commander, um, I, I do play with unlimited money because like my preferred playstyle for these skylines is just a chill vibe. Uh, I do try to work to balance the budget on the system, but um, because I don't want to necessarily worry about trying to make money when I'm just setting the city up and I'd rather pre-plan, you know, metro systems and stuff from the day one as opposed to waiting to unlock them. I play with unlimited Soil, resources, money, and all progression unlocked. Just so it's more of a sandbox city as opposed to anything else. But I still worry about the balance of everything. Um, and yeah, on your point, there is yeah, with the hit stun system, yeah, I can kind of see that. Um, you don't want to... I guess don't want to punish people too much for going down a certain play style. Yeah, well, because the problem is, is that right now is that... Um... When you brace, now you're able to ignore chip damage, because it used to be even if you braced, bracing was to avoid the hit stun side of things, not to uh, increase your defense technically. And then, so now that it does increase your defense and reduces the damage that you take, it also still technically um, bypasses hit stun because it reduces the amount of damage you take. But then it means that integrity is now the uh, mathematically just the better option in like every way. You take less damage, uh, you have a higher expected value, and you're able to uh, push through hit stun. Well, brace no longer lets you push through hit stun. Uh, it still says you only take uh, hit stun equal to damage minus successes on your integrity check. Uh, it does second. still say that in, in the um, 
in the in the section. Um, like, hey, nice. combat flow and mechanics. Sorry, one one moment. I am doing stream raiders, and Mirai is available, so I'm getting Mirai Barat up. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And also, um, on my side, Nij. Yeah, no, I, I'm addicted to this game. See, Skylands is just such a wonderful vibe. <laughs> Even when there's problems, like the fact that, like, I might not be getting enough goods through my city. Hey, Mirai. Thank you again for joining on the stream here. That is a very funny little thing there in the bottom left. That's why I've got it up on the big uh, view right now so they can see it properly. Oh, no, oh that's very cute. That is super cute. And of course, Chris Ops comes back just in time for me, right, to be here. <sighs> hey, you stepped away, though, Chris Ops. All right. So, on the document. Uh, so yeah, uh, Mirai, go ahead and start with the Rao background thing that I wanted you to do. Uh, we'll start with that tonight, and then we'll says, move to the wheel. Hello, friends and buddies. I am back today for cool stuff. Sounds stocks. good, and today I might look less. Sleepy <sighs> yeah, my I'm trying to figure out the best way to do is cargo. Sorry, um, I forgot to feed it through Discord, but uh, Mirai says. Hello, friends and buddies. I am back today for Cool Stuffs. Today I might look sleepy, too, since I finally moved my camera closer. Nice. Yeah, nice. So, uh, go ahead with what you were saying, Seda. Uh, I, I, mine was the side diagnose to my game of, yeah, I have a problem with my city cargo report right now where the trains are backed up. I need to figure out how to unclog that without... Causing favoritism. Ah. Oh, and Nietzsche, absolutely. Feel free to um, send your city to my DMs. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to help out newer players. Sea Skylands is a very fine dance. So, um, the hit stun system right now, as it stands, does not apply right now. Um, because it does not actually have, uh, until it gets revamped, it basically, as far as I'm concerned, does not exist. All right, you may want to note that then, because... Based on what's written, it still applies. It's just very strange. Hmm. So basically, the hit stun is uh, you can use evasion a single time with no downside per combat round. Or uh, per combat round. Um, uh, and it's basically the more you get hit, the less effective you are at evading and. Uh, bracing and such which makes sense the more hits you take you know you're more likely to just be staggered yeah yeah i think what we may do 
Um. I think it's going to be a minus two to your score each time, uh, building minus two each time that you evade. And then if you actually get hit, it builds to, it uh, applies to integrity as well. It's a bit more to keep track of though, which is why I'm a little worried about it. Mm. Mm, you could instead make it so it's a stacking penalty on each thing each time you use it. So, like, you evade minus two on evasion until end of turn. You use integra uh, you use uh, brace minus two on brace to the end of the turn. So, you know, it means that, like, if you're just trying to sit there and use uh, brace actions... You're going to take penalty after penalty after penalty, but instead, if you're, like, mixing it up a bit, dodging some and bracing against those that you don't think you can dodge, that could make it a little bit more balanced. Could potentially, yeah. Do we want to make it so you cannot brace or dodge twice in a row? Hmm. That seems a bit, uh, what's the word? Punishing? Arbitrary. Yeah. Especially considering the fact that, like, you know, even just going by, like, what's shown in the anime, like, you know, there's been multiple times where, like, Pokemon's just been sitting there, like, you know, doing the whole, like, uh, like, arms protecting the face and, like, just sitting there for a little bit. We could do away with the hit stun system altogether. Also, uh, remind me after we figure out the hit stun. Um, I do want to go over the merits and expertise system. All right. Uh, but we'll get to that in a bit. All right. So we could do away with hit stun. I think it makes sense to keep it. Um, so if you get hit multiple times, you're going to be less effective at uh, taking or dodging those hits uh, as uh, until your next turn comes up. That is the idea of it is... You know, this is what happens between your turns. Hmm. I mean, that's kind of like the general thought that I was trying to go with that. Like, you essentially. Every time you take like, you know, that move, you have a penalty. Basically per use per turn, but like it re would reset the start of your turn. Yeah. So the question becomes, how are we going to actually do this? Uh, Mirai. Uh, just so you know, uh... Oh, okay, I see what's going on on your side. Never mind, I thought you were putting a border on the top of the page so you don't color in that area, but yeah. The areas around the where the text is should be, or more, can be more elaborate than what's behind the text itself. That's why I gave you the margins that we're using. But yeah. 
Alright, so the hit's done... I'm just trying to think of how to revamp this. How to have it work. The only thing that's coming to mind is just that, uh, you know, you, somebody rolls against your evasion, it reduces your next evasion by two. Or it could be one, I guess. Either way. Just, if we're dividing by two, it should probably be one. Well, things like, uh, like using defense curl and such, those are not divided by two. So... Yeah, we can probably just yeah, do it as either. one. So if somebody, if you, if somebody rolls against your evasion, it reduces the, it by one for the next one. And then if you don't evade one of those, then your integrity begins to get reduced by one. And I'm thinking uh, with that in mind, we can change the dodge and uh, brace to a plus two bonus instead of only plus one. Um, <sighs> I know very technical. Very, very technical. It is. There are going to be parts of the system that are going to be very technical. Uh, very much that we have to figure out and decide things on. Yep, this is why you push off testing the actual technical stuff to me. Well, yes, but so you've not been available. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, it's a bit hard to do all of the work on a laptop. That and is also very true. Multiple screens. And of all you, hello. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt a Zim there. Oh, that reminds me of another thing that I also need to go over special movements, but we'll come back to that as well. Star Wolf Skin says, Sorry, I'm taking a while to get my bearings, but there will be art in a moment. No worries, Mirai. It's fine. Um. Yeah, I, I think it'll just be a my a building minus one every time that you evade or get hit. I think that's the simplest way to do it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, game. Game. Game's being weird to me.
there, Zunek Kicks. I hope I said that right. Welcome in, though. I'm just typing right now on the system here, so... You know. You are Not good, I... I was just going to say, not a lot to say right now. Oh, understandable. I'm, fo I'm just focusing on, like, redoing this cargo section. So I'm just, like, head empty, just full of planes and trucks and uh, trains. And trucks and love? Two trucks. Aw. Uh, Holding hands. Holding tires. <laughs> Holding tires. Ah, Zoon kicks. Well, either way, welcome in, Zune, and thanks for coming by. Uh, another quick reminder to everybody, if you'd like on the wheel, let me know for art. Uh, we're not uh, spinning yet. Uh, Mirai's working on something else right now. But uh, do keep in mind, again, this is a commission. So if you do win the wheel, it will be $33 for line dart and... 77 for colors. And Nij, I'm looking at your screenshot here. Um, is there anything in particular that you are curious about in terms of feedback or did something go wrong with the city? You just let me know what you want because like, I can go like rip, rip into things or, you know, be like, you know, hey, maybe try this, that. It's what's the nature of the feedback? Because overall, pretty solid, but um, definitely a couple points to be aware of. And that's kind of what I'm asking, like, if there was a problem you had encountered with your city, or if it was just more of a, you know, hey, this is four hours, what are your thoughts? If I'm not saved, no. Didn't go well for the town. Yeah, I mean, looking at that, my initial assessment is that you have industry way too close to your residencies. And the, and the traffic flow for that particular city, I would estimate, probably wouldn't scale up too well. Cities is a very, very finnic... finnic beast. Something to note on traffic with city skylines is that you want to utilize it as... Uh, utilize the different sizes of roads as basically veins in your body. That, that's a way to think about it. You know, you got your main arteries, which are your uh, large roads. Uh, those ones you do not want to have any construction on, except for maybe some... Like, like I personally, when I play it... Uh, I will put, like, my police departments or schools on that. Uh, you know, emergency services and the city services. that That's the term, I think. Um, on the large roads. But I will not hmm. zone them for uh, commercial industry or anything of that sort. Uh, instead, what you do is off of those large roads you'll build the medium roads. Uh, I don't really know the technical terms on the various parts of the veins. I just know the general way that they work. Um, yeah. And yeah. I would actually add an asterisk onto there because of, <clears throat> since I've played a lot of City Skylines, the game's stupid. Oh, the game is so. literally to a toddler because... You might think, hey, this is a major highway system going in there. Sure, they'd want to have like three, four lane traffic. No, no. A very key thing in the, you know, the back markings of City Skylines to know how it works to be. Uh, Seda? No, that's not a good sign. Oh, sorry. I accidentally pressed the wrong button. My oh. stream still heard me, but. 
I have like a hot key on my keyboard to like mute my mic in case like my family comes in. Ah. Uh. Um. But yeah, no, the stream still hurt me. Um. But yeah, like for those of you like looking at my stream right now, what you'll be able to see is that there is a two lane highway. Almost all the traffic is being shoved down one lane. Because the pathing for Sims in City, city Skylines is literally shortest route. Tolls forever. I mean, you see some sim cities that do tolls. Ooh, literally no one's going down this bridge. Interest. Oh, wait, hold on, because I'm looking at the Joe City Services. Yeah, like, you would imagine that, hey, if you're just going to go straight on this highway, you'd want to utilize, you know, that empty lane, wouldn't you? But no, almost everyone is going to merge into that left lane at some point. Um, because it's technically the shortest route. Which is actually why I'm trickly trying to figure out how to manage this, because if I have one train station here, one train station is closer, people are going to decide I'm going to like, I like this one more than the other. Why? I don't know. The game is weird like that. Um, I actually find some of my best ways of making money, though, is parks. If you actually make it so the park like, if you have park life, that is. If you make it so the park is more convenient to get to, like, a shopping mall than taking the car, people will not only not cop in their car, but they'll pay you to go to the mall. It's actually kind of cool like that. See you later, Zune, and hey there, I do things, and hello, Achi. Uh, just a reminder, the wheel is open. Mirai is working on something else right now, but we'll be doing yeah. our first spin after they're done. Any, uh, any, yeah, needs like I play with infinite just because I don't want to worry about that. Like I'm, I'm here to have fun with the game, not like you know try to manage you know a, you know a city crisis. And Terry, thank you for the pet pets. How you doing tonight? Ah, oh, perfect. There we go. Much more balanced. And yeah, I'm doing well. Just chilling with some games as we are having a little bit of a chit chat about tabletop systems and ideas and stuff for it. Alright, so I've written in here, every time an attack comes your way, it is more difficult to evade and or withstand the Star next Wolf one. Skin says, I'm gonna admit, I think my brain is shut down tonight, I am struggling to think of an idea for this thingy. Alright, uh, Mirai, uh, 
I will say, like, what you were drawing with the uh, head on the left side was actually looking really good. Uh, from what I saw of it, yeah, it was. Like, if you go back to that, uh, that was looking really good. Uh, yeah. That. Um... Yeah, th that's looking really good already, as it is. Uh, maybe make it a little bit smaller. Uh, other than that, I think you're, you've are you got a good idea building there. Or I guess just... I, I guess if it's uh, faint, it can stay that size, actually. Um, the key is making sure that it's a background. It's not something people will be actively looking at, necessarily. Uh, kind of like the example that I showed you. Uh, I sent them the uh, uh, Exalted book for an example. Here, they have some really nice backgrounds for that. Oh yeah, Exalted is great shit. And also, Mango, I'm not quite sure what you mean by wind turbine. Or wind turbines and generator equals easy money without the hassle. I mean, like if you have a dam that you're putting your sewage into, that's kind of easy money for electricity, but wind turbines and generators still cost money. Um, I'm not sure what eclipse phase is, uh, Orca, so I don't think so. I'm not sure if you actually uh, brought it up or not, actually. You take care, Nige. Can we get a group a rule? I am um, Taldarius. Um, are, we, are we allowed to rule on your stream? Since this is a multi stream. I suppose. Yeah! I'm trying not to do a woo too too loud because my dad's still up. <laughs> yeah, my family's still up, yeah. Is it a cute? No, no, no. Chat cute. Chat cute. They are not mutually exclusive. But what if they were? But they're not. But what if they were? But they're not. What if they were? They're not, though. But what if they were? They're not, though. Okay, I'm stopping sure? this circle because it'll just keep going. <laughs> um, as I wrote hey, here... Look as I wrote here, every time an attack comes your way, it is more difficult to evade and or withstand the next one. Thus, when someone attacks you, whether you evade or not, the next attack that comes will be easier as your evasion score gets decreased by one. The same applies to your integrity. This penalty is reset on your next turn. How's that sound? I think it sounds pretty reasonable. Yep. I'll have to do some testing to see how that actually, like, shakes out in terms of things, but yeah. Sounds pretty good. I do things thank you so much for the bitties. You guys are also rainbow, too. Mm. Oh my god, I am so gay right now. Oh no. What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, me right. That is looking fantastic. Oh yeah, looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm liking the liking the feel of it. So the idea is uh I, I know I've explained this, I just don't remember for sure if I've explained it to both of you. So I'm just going to re-explain it anyways, because also there's the viewers and such. Um, so each chapter, of course, is going to have its own focus color. 
Uh, it'll allow you guys for sl uh, scrolling through the book to easily determine, okay, this is purple, so therefore it's the first chapter. Uh, this is... Uh, this is blue, so it's the second chapter, so on and so forth. Actually, I think we will make it a rainbow. Yes. Good. And so hey, daughter, purple, how's it going? Purple leads into blue, which leads into... Uh, we'll, we'll do green and then yellow and yeah. Things. Science. Woo! You'll all be in on the fact that we're, you know, making it rainbow, but, uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, but also, as part of it, they're also going to have a design that is focused on a particular uh, part of the body. Uh, the first chapter, we're going with the nose. <laughs> you just wrote blurry in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing good with that. Um, <laughs> but it'll, each chapter will also have a focus on a particular part. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the chapter itself, at least not right now. Um, the first chapters, particularly starting with that stories, uh, that stories thing. Um, that in particular, uh, one second. Mm. That seems Look, problematic. All I'm going to say real quick is don't you think that's a little on the nose? Yes. But, um, uh, but yeah, I somehow accidentally buried a plane. <laughs> that's not good. Oh. Somehow, it just the, all I just see is the tail of the plane. Somehow, my taxiway decided to gain elevation. It did not have takeoff clearance. Ooh. Um, another thing that uh, you can draw inspiration from with this uh, Mirai. Uh, I would say make it a lighter shade. Uh, but another thing that you could draw inspiration is kind of the traditional Japanese uh, art styles. Kind of a lot of watercolor kind of aesthetic to it. At least that's what I've got, you know, going on in my head. Um... But yeah, each chapter is going to have its color. Each chapter is going to be focused on a body part. The nose is for the stories thing, you know, with Greaves uh, smoking his pipe. Um, combat will have probably a fang focus or claw focus, one of the two. Or both. Could be both. Um... Star Wolf Skin says, yeah, I get what you mean. I'll take the opportunity to do some good painting training. Sounds great, Mirai. Uh, just remember that the text is black on the document, so it needs to definitely look good with black. The uh, black text needs to be very visible behind it, or on top of it. But yeah, that's the uh, general design idea that I have for the document. Also, we got the hits done settled, so excellent. Uh, the next thing that I want to figure out, special movements. Uh, these are things burrow for you know digging through the ground climbing flying hovering and swimming are what i have so far mm -hmm. yep. um oh yeah hover what's up 
Uh, I was going to say, by the way, uh, now that you have those, uh, make sure that we actually do change the um, type bonus ones. So, like, obviously, like, flying type, for example, should be plus 10 flying speed instead of just plus 10 speed. Yeah, that is, uh, I, I will go through that when I'm, when I'm doing the rewrite of the system, of the, or as I'm going through the rewriting of the system is when I'll be getting that. Um, when I say rewriting, I'm meaning like, you know, making it not the bullet points. Yeah. Um, also, I'm going to move, I'm moving movement down under adventuring because it kind of feels like it fits better there rather than combat it does have stuff to do with combat in particular but i i, I mean what do you guys think rather venturing like just um so the adventuring chapter, it covers things like resting, uh, lighting, environmental challenges, uh, environmental challenges being things like falling, drowning, rough terrain, etc. Well, I think one thing to put into perspective is that like the movement rules in the combat section are specifically for moving during combat rounds. Instead, uh, we should probably have an adventuring movement speed thing going on. That's fair. Because those are two entirely different systems uh, in different, uh, like, contexts. So, obviously, like, you know, knowing how far you can travel in a day is very important. As well as how fast you can move in however long our rounds are. So we could make, like, a little chart that says, like, you know, if you have, like, you know, 30 movement speed, this is how far you can move in a day. If you have 40, this is how far you can move in a day. Yada, yada, yada. If you have 20, this is how far you can move in a day. Like, let's say Vayne gets his wing broken, like, with the wounded mechanic thing uh, that we have second. now. Sorry, I had a bot on the Discord. I had to go ban them. Yeah, uh, all good. All good. All right. Uh, so, so what were you saying? I was saying uh, we should also make sure that we have it for um, lower movement speeds as well. Uh, like, for example, like, Vayne would obviously be at 30 flying, and then, like, his walking would be really bad. And, like, with the wounded mechanic as a persistent status effect, uh, like crippling of a limb, if he gets his wing broken, for example, and has to walk, it would also be important that players are able to determine how far you'd be able to move in a day with that situation as well. All right. That is a more technical side of things, so I would like to leave that to you to write out. All right. I was just going to say, you know... The reason that I'm bringing that up is because I'm me. Yeah, that, that, and that's why I'm saying you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, yeah, special movement types. We've got burrowing, climbing, flying, hovering, swimming. Do you guys have any other ideas of types that we might have? Hmm. Um, oh. Climbing, flying, hovering, swimming. Only thing that I can think of for like a special movement type would almost be like sliding, like almost like sliding on ice. But like, I feel like that might be making things too complicated. 
Yeah, that might just be like a thing where it's like, you know, that that might be just left up for DMs to decide. Or not DMs, but you know, fuck it, whatever. Um hmm. I know we need to make jumping rules at some point. But that's not a technically speaking, like a special movement type. Yeah, when I'm talking about the special movement types, uh, unlike some people, uh, it is a, it's something where you actually have a speed associated with it. Yeah. The only part, the, the only thing that I could think of where, like, a special movement type of jumping would be Spoink. Poor Spoink. <laughs> but it's, it's still not, you know... <laughs> Hello, it's it's Commander. still not. In response to your request, we have sent backup. Good luck, Commander. We are forever in your debt. Oh, Tanya! Thank you so much for those five gift subs! Hi, Tana-chan. And that completes our next September goal! And Orca, thank you for the pet pets. Which means congrats now, congrats on your new sub, Seda. What was that? Congrats on your new sub, Seda. What? Yeah, you got one of the Oh, subs. yeah, you got the gifted oh. sub. Thank you. And also, hello, Alpine. No, no, no pink. No pink. No pink. Get rid of this pink. Ah. Uh, mango uh, digging. Uh, we call it burrowing, but it's the same thing. So yeah, uh, with that, uh, com with the completion of that uh, September goal, Taki icons are now an option for these art streams. Uh, those would be fifty-five dollars each, uh, and it'll of course be both the well. You got two examples right up there in the upper left. Though Bye. you guys would get the uh, version that Seda has. Yeah, this is a player version. Yeah. We have specific okay. uh, uh, tabletop character versus uh, player one. Or versus general ones. But yeah. So you're, say so you're telling me I shouldn't, shouldn't immediately switch over to Dart just so I can make the Dart Dart joke? <sighs> Correct. Understood. So yeah, if anybody else would like on the wheel, again, let me know. And for being some my side of the chat, um, Zim is doing a art commission raffle wheel. Some good art. Uh, by the way, you two, I sent something on Discord. I saw. I will give that a read. Yeah, I just want to make sure because obviously in streamer mode you don't get the, the pingies as much. I, I do. Um, that freaking uh, freaking spammer for some reason tagged me. Like, are you, are, are you purposely trying to get banned or what? <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to be trying something a little bit different for the cargo of my airport here. I haven't actually done this before, but it should be no interesting. Bear, Tanya. Since the cargo airports have two lanes, I can turn I can effectively turn into a one-way kind of system. Um, yeah, where... That... Oh. Sorry. I did not know we gained one. A plus one. Hello. I, I, I said hi, Tanya. I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, um, I popped in because of what Zim just said. The uh, spammer. Because they were throwing tags around, that's actually what reminded me. Oh, right. I forgot to do a thing. <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Something like that. 
Something like that. Oh god, we got second pink and I didn't even realize it. Yeah, I can't really think of any additional movement types that would be applicable or matter. Or beneficial, and didn't Terry's no you gotta be careful with that gauntlet. Now chat's been snapped. So glad that I'm largely immune to that. Also, haha, Zim got his clothes stolen again. I yeah, noticed. Of uh, of course he did, because it's bath time. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya, for getting me all moist, like the good girl you are. Is is this your <laughs> safe? Am I am I gonna get banned on my own stream for this? Nah, it's fine. Nah, are you sure? It yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Are you sure? Oh God. Tanya KT and cheered with 258 gee bitties. I really need to make that one more. Well, then before you change it. <laughs> I'm probably not going to change it, but thank you for Tom the bitties. Oh, okay, actually, Zim, that was bitties. really loud on my stream. Yeah. Ow. Um, I'll stop feeding it through Discord. Uh, I just might have to be like, hold on a sec, give me right plays one of their cards. Oh, understood. See, Zim made the mistake of giving me the ability to fight back. <laughs> Would you miss something? Oh, no, Lunar, um, Zim has a, was getting a lot of bits on history, and then the sound alert feeds through Discord. Oh, yeah, I, I, I know that. No, that... I have, I have a way to fight back when he pulls those lines now. Of course, now that real, now that I think about it, I'm, I'm uh, he's Pavloving himself into being a worse person by doing that. He's Pavloving yourself, or you're Pavloving? No, he's Pavloving himself. Uh huh. Yeah, because that, that means that uh, every time that uh, he pulls those lines, he ends up making money. Yeah, but you're the one giving him the money, so... Oh, I, I'm not denying that I'm getting Pavlov. Uh, Robert, I will send you a PayPal invoice. Um, but these are in USD. But yeah, if you win the art wheel, uh, I send a PayPal invoice. I did not mean to get rid of that highway. Same direction. I'm gonna go watch that Star Wars Rogue One ending scene again. It's just very good watching Vader, like, just go for it. Wait, what, what scene are you talking about? The uh, Star Wars Rogue One ending scene. Oh, Rogue One. I thought you said Star Wars Episode One. I was very confused. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I'm talking about the Rogue One ending scene. Uh, yeah, he gets I, to I... he gets to do that to you in uh in the Star Wars games uh, for uh, the RPG games. Yeah, Rogue One's post Disney, right? Well, yeah, but it's, 
it's one of the very, very few good post Disney ones. It's, oh, so, it's, it's, it's actually it's really good. That explains, if it's post Disney, that explains why I never heard of the scene in question. Okay, well, I'm sending it to you and you should watch it immediately. It, By all I, recommendations, you should watch it right now. Yeah. Uh, it's actually really good, um, mostly because of the fact that they were completely restricted on it. They weren't oh, able this to come. Scene. Yeah, they I... were restricted on it because they could not. Uh, they they had a very set. This is leading up into episode four. So they had a very clear and set. This is the end of where this uh, video, or this movie is. Yep. Right. No, um, I actually, I am in fact familiar with the scene, but not for the reasons that you might think. I have sent you a link. <laughs> Are you ready? It's that time. Please, please have it have the song. I wanted to have the song. Tonight's mm. the night. Please give me the... Uh... I'm hoping you pronounce it right. Um... Uh, Zayant? I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it right. I, I, my braid is derpy. But good evening. Welcome on in. Eternal Kangaskhan. You turn me into a Kangas can, Eternal. You know, you know this means war, right? You know this means war. You now are a, a stack of salt. Are you ready for a miracle? <laughs> ready as I can be. Uh, real quick, Mirai, this is looking amazing. I do still want to remind you that it, uh, that black text is going to be on top of it. So make sure that that'll be visible through it. But otherwise, um, the concept as a whole looks amazing. Uh, one thing that we could do is we could have a version like this and do, um, have it be as a special, like, splash text with white text on it. Splash Ooh. page. True. So we have too. a version like that as a splash page. And you, the, can, um, you, you always specific... know... Oh, oh, you first. I was going to say, uh, it could either be on the, uh, like, title thing for the chapter one page, or it could be on the page after that. But it would probably be better as the uh, chapter one title page art splash thing if it's going to be like this yeah what i was going to say is that you could also go down the route of um basically you can still put you, you can still put like a white text box overlaying it so you kind of make the image more opaque true true Either way, though, the concept here for this art is awesome. This is a, exactly what I'm looking for so far. It's just the uh, colors that could probably use some work. But yeah, so that um, in the uh, Star Wars tabletop system. Hmm. Uh, 
Uh, Seda. Yeah. Uh, spammer's in yours now. Oh. This must be the loneliest man on planet Earth. Is it the same one? Uh, did Probably. they have a name that started with the with a U? Yeah. Gotta love yeah, my mods. Is... <laughs> Nuked before he had a chance to do anything. Look, but by the time by the time I I looked over, Star Wolf skin says, "Done, Brian, already got it." Figure out the yeah. styling for this, but I'm glad the concept. I got to watch it get so far. Which was hold very on, cathartic. hold on. Figure out how to balance colors so the text still shows up. My placeholder will be there to remind me. You get to figure out the styling for this, but you're glad the concept is working so far. Ah, perfect. Thank you so much, Mirai. Yeah, the, the concept art so far is incredible. I'm loving it. You've got exactly what I'm looking for so far. Uh, go ahead, though, everyone. I can't remember what I was going to say now. Yeah, don't worry, Noah, I am aware of it. Uh, mods are dealing with it. Did you get hit with another one? Uh, no, uh, it's just, um... No, just basically, like... My computer reacting to it, understandably. Yep. Um... I think those are the only uh, movement types that we're probably going to wind up having to deal with. So I will leave it at those five. And then, of course, just land movement, which would include the likes of Spoink. Yeah. Just be like considered like, you know, standard on the ground, whatever. Yeah. We, we, the storytellers can change that as needed. You know, yeah. if they want to put in more detail on Spoink being some kind of special case, but either way, we're going to. Man, poor Spoink, though. Yeah. Yep. I'm still waking up, and I hate that. Uh, ba -ba, let's go. I hate, I hate getting old. Used to be just eyes open, and anti-gravity lifts you onto your feet, and you're ready to go. Now it's like I spend two hours trying to remember what up is. Up is obviously purple. <laughs> yeah. Up is purple, and it tastes like tangerine. <laughs>
Oh, actually, hold on. I should have put that in general. Um... Ooh. Mirai, I'm liking this idea here. Just having most of the uh, wolf there uh, basically transparent. Or not, well, white, you know? I kind of like that idea. Just that yeah, shape amidst this? the purple and such. Uh, this is the uh, one of the background images for the Rao system document. Ah, uh, got it. Or, yeah. Because like, be I'm sitting there like, which character is this? I don't, I'm not familiar with this. Am I, am I missing that much stuff going on? If it's for the book that's the book that's being worked on, that makes much more sense, or PDF or whatever format. It's you, you know, I can't work. Like, did, did I mention I just got up? <laughs> <laughs> what were you about to say for your an idea, Taldarius? Uh, could also have it so that way, like you know, the head is there, and then like have the uh, the body like fade back into like landscape pieces. Ooh, so like yeah. Her being like a tree covered hill that like goes with the the shape of a body. I'll leave it's it up to factor. I'll leave it up to you, Mirai. I trust yeah, that in your the... skill because you are incredible and you've done a wonderful job. Because that that adds to the uh, spoop factor when the thing is just physically emerging from what should be protective barriers. Uh, this particular one will be for chapter one of the book. Document, whatever. Um, and basically, each chapter is going to have its own color theme to it. And with that, each, uh, each chapter will also have a different focus on the part of the body. Like, for combat, it'll probably be claws or fangs or both. For the adventuring section chapter, I'll probably just have it be uh, paws, you know, walking along. Um, and, and we'll figure out exacts on that as we go. Right now, I just want to have one that we'll use across the entire document until later on when we're more firm and can have uh, specifics for each chapter. But this one being uh, this is mostly because the document is starting off with a story that I put together, just a short one. It's the reason I was up for 38 hours. Yeah, you should get some sleep. I already did. More sleep. Sleep forever. Home. No. <laughs> no, sleep forever is called death. Yeah, and that's jet. That's jet. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> several necromancers would like to know your location. Necromancers don't generally bring the soul back. It's just the body. So the soul is I still mean... at rest. Okay, 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 okay. Let's let's see. W wandering around lethargically. Communicating only in grunts and groans. Preferring to the dark, the quiet, and the damp. You know, this kind of sounds like there's not really that much of a difference once the soul is removed for most people that... Um, how best to put it? How best to put it? Prefer to stay them. in just... the home. <laughs> also, you're not reviving them. You're, they're just turning them into your office workers. Uh, you know, I, I can't even. I can't even argue that point. My my coworkers, I swear, half of them are undead. It would explain the total lack of brain activity. Not to mention the communication skills. Oh, no, they have great communication skills. 
full of colorful four-letter words. And if you ever want to find out just how broad their vernacular is, ask them why a thing that is the one thing that they do within the entire company has not been done for over a week. All right. I'm going to read this off again. I know I did it earlier, but I don't think I was recording it, or maybe I was. But either way, we got a lot more people here now. Plus me right here, yeah. so I'm going to read off the uh, inspiration for this particular section being purple smoke and such. All right. Uh, I'm going to go grab a drink real quick. I've already heard it, obviously. So yeah. Ahead. And I will mute my mic. I uh, say, did you have anything you want to say to your chat real quick before I do? Um, I mean, my my chat itself's fine. Um, I'm just dealing with the the Discord because um, obviously, you know, on my Discord, it is um not like I give an at everyone ping or an at here ping like once in a blue moon, like maybe like once or twice a year at most. So to suddenly have 17 at everyone pings um, get into my Discord obviously caused a little bit of a fuss. So um, yeah, I'm just figuring Do out. Do you have those there, even available to everyone? shouldn't have oh weird all right well while you're doing that i will go ahead and read this off and your chat can enjoy it as well you yeah, please do stories are what bring people together folklore and legends are what shape people of all ages they impart wisdom or simply bring enjoyment. From the labors of Hercules to the serpent biting its tail, even the simpler stories of the humble customer service representative. These stories are intriguing. They live with you, and sometimes they even live beyond you. However, you know what the best stories are? A brief pause hangs after the rhetorical question is posed in the small campsite. The gray-haired speaker that calls himself a gnome leans against the wheel of his wagon and puffs on his pipe before he continues, the purple smoke swirling above him and almost seeming to take shape. The smoke forms into what Hunter's mind interprets as a table surrounded by chairs. The best stories are the ones made with friends. Another puff of the pipe interrupts the speaker again. This time, the purple smoke joins the table, still somehow floating there, and small objects settle on the table, with the chairs being filled with other two-legged creatures. One of them is at the head of the table, a raised partition before them. Greaves speaks again, a warm smile on the gnome's face, as he looks down at the pup laying next to his leg, watching the smoke with rapt attention, ears twitching at the words. There's an imagination that can only be fostered with friends. One that we're all born with. One that should not be stifled, but instead allowed the room to... Uh, uh, but instead allowed the room to bloom and grow. The pipe is puffed on again. The character at the head of the table in the lavender pipe smoke gestures emphatically. Despite the small scale, it's plain that those gathered at the table are listening eagerly. One of them picks up a die, and Hunter could swear he heard a clicking sound as they shake their hand and toss the object back on the table. Echoing cheers ring out across the campsite as the Roller and their friends around the table throw their arms in the air in celebration. The one behind the screen leans back, a sense of satisfaction at a story well told is felt from the faint, wispy smoke. These tales spark that creativity. They breathe life from the imagination infused in them. There's a reason why all those many creations stand the test of time, commanding the attention from childhood on through adulthood. It is the imagination that they bring, the stories they inspire, the reason you're here. To relive that childhood imagination, to make stories with your friends, to triumph through adversity in fantastical ways. 
to hear your hard-working storyteller ask you, how do you want to do this? To be those companions you've held near and dear to your heart for all these years. The strange creature gives a satisfied smile, puffing on his pipe, while those at the table above reshape, going from their forms before to animalistic creatures on four legs or two legs. One even becomes a ball with two half-oval objects attached to it. Hunter shakes his head, his mesmerized gaze breaking from staring at the purple haze as an unexpected quiet hangs in the air. To look at Greaves, he speaks in a quiet, stuttery voice. What, what, what do, do, do you m mean? I'm just escorting your c c cart. The gnome is quiet for a time longer before he looks down at the hyena creature, a knowing smile crossing his features. And he seems to look through Hunter, as if he were looking into another world, before he speaks again. Oh, my apologies. I'm speaking to the other you. Hunter tilts his head in confusion at that, but he gets the sense that the gnome creature would not divulge the secret of what he meant by that. So, uh, for the record, Mirai, what you're drawing is fantastic and exactly what I want. Though I will be asking for a special art piece for this particular page. Well, that's what kind of gave the inspiration for the chapter one art. Seriously, I sent so many messages to Mirai for uh, about all this. <laughs> I feel a bit bad. Gosh, I love tea. Tea is very good. I'm I'm actually just a little sad that this they're not making this blend of tea anymore. Which one is it? Uh, it's the Queen of Hearts blend from um, Clipper Tea. It's a green tea blend that has hibiscus, pomegranate, blueberry, dragon fruit, strawberry, apple, pineapple, orange, vanilla, rose hips, and rose in it. It is lovely. Well, very nice. So what did you think, Tanya? Tanya Sapien says... Good job. Apparently, uh, Tanya has lost her voice. No, not that. Just uh, hammering through some uh, morning routine stuff. So to keep my mic muted. Uh... So you didn't actually listen. Understood. No, I... I have a wireless headset. <laughs> I was listening.
Oh, I'm loving this art, Mirai. What's up? Star Wolf. Oh no, sorry. I'm I'm just I'm, I'm just mumbling to myself. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. I haven't painted in a while, lol. Well, you're doing an amazing job. <laughs> it may have been a while, but you've do you've done an amazing. Sorry, me I was talking there. All good. All good. Yeah, uh, why isn't that feeding through at the moment? Uh, because Seda is also streaming, and I don't want the uh, other sound effects and such to interrupt his stream. Fair enough. Because like, when, when, you know, a thousand biddies get sent, I hear the very loud thousand biddies get sent. <laughs> um... Yeah. There we go. Let's just bring that up over there. Thank you for the head, Pat Sorka. I'm back. Welcome back. Orca, thank you for the pet pets. Welcome back. My headset decided to cut out for a second, but hi, Wernie. Hello, round me. Does the SATA have the row command? I do have the row command. Good. Who doesn't have the row command? 
I don't, but that's because I don't have any commands. Row. Yeah, he doesn't have any commands. He's the top. I regret nothing. I mean, okay. <laughs> Total silence. I mean, I'm not gonna fight you on the on it. Oh, I myself I'm... am just. Uh, I I'm working on all of this. So. Oh right, oh, yeah. the other thing I wanted to bring up. What was it? Ah, the merits and expertise. Mm -hmm. Are you still dealing with stuff, Seda? Uh, I'm on the tail end of it. I will be ready to go in probably less than five minutes. Okay. We'll save it for then. All right. Hey there, Lexi. Uh, does anybody else want on the art wheel, by the way? They are $33 for Lion Dart, uh, $55 for Taki Icons, and uh, $77 for Color Dart. Uh, if you've got the crowns, then yes, Wernie. Yeah, no one's done the uh the colored crowns one. Wait, there's a there's a crowns one? How much does that cost? Go look at the store. Mostly because I don't have any freaking clue myself. I don't remember. <laughs> oh, the free art lines, fifteen thousand, there it is. Well no, the lines is already taken. The colored ones is the one. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, 30,000. Wait, why am I logged out of this? No, log in. Ooh, we'll get there first. <laughs> I gotta freaking refresh the... Oh, no, I have nowhere near enough. Yeah, my war chest is still recovering after, uh... Going toe to toe with Bostein. It's it's been a it's been a few weeks, but both na nations expended most of their armies in the war. Ah, mm -hmm. uh... I, I don't think was uh, expended his his war. Would you just leave me with my cope already? <laughs> <laughs> Woe has a very, 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 very large treasury. Yeah, and meanwhile, I've uh, had to carefully throttle how much I spend on this stuff. Believe me, if it was in my budget, I would gladly throw several hundred dollars a week at this, but, um, sadly, it does not. What's up, Lexi? <laughs> Quick, Lexi, run to a pawn shop. Lexi? Return to me, 
what thou hast stolen. Or else. <laughs> or down. Well, lined up at that end. Hold, hold on. I'm, I'm clipping that. of bottle. Oh god, things are breaking. Okay, we'll just use the undo button then instead of the backspace. There we go. Because <laughs> of course, things can never just fucking work. There we go. Clip I mean, has been made and posted. It is now immortal. What clip? Return to me what you have stolen. Thunk. Or else. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Seda? Mm hmm. Ban the Tana. You can ban me, but you can't ban the truth. Those of you over in Sadist chat, you're all cute. How dare you? I'm only I'm allowed to call them cute. Ha, mm, I'm sorry. We have at least a fifty percent. We have at least fifty percent agreeing right now. Um, Ada, <clears throat> I just noticed the the prices for your various chat stuff. Why are there integer overflows in here? Integer overflows? What are you talking about? The high profile ones like the 69, 69, 69, 69? Yeah. Why not? I, I, um, I, I mean, I guess if somebody does manage to save up 70 million points, they've kind of earned it. Yeah, I mean, only at like 167,000 on Zim's channel. I spend my points as fast as I get them. Should the beans, we got the beans. Speaking of redemptions, I really need to get, uh... I really need to add a redemption 
for the uh, general cards to pack. Hmm. What, Tanya didn't sign the TF consent form? How dare. And now I'm not going to. See, Tana is Benoit, now and forever. Lexi, uh, you probably got it from a channel where you got you popped in there at one point and they got a gift sub and you know that's how you got it. Yeah, I know when I've sub bombed people before that a lot of the times the names that pop up on the random list are people I have never seen at any point in time. Oh, hey, that's for Swifter. I used to watch him when I was, like, 10. Wait, um, were you, were you just low-key throwing shade at Lexi? Hold on a second. Took a minute for that oh. to click. No, that was, I, I legitimately used to watch him when I was, like, 10. Like, I would watch, like, all those uh, Swifter Says videos for fucking uh, Call of Duty and all that. Ah. And now he comes and hangs out with the likes of us. Hey, I actually uh, play some uh, COD professionally. Well, it was, There's like, a sweetheart. Pro. Hey, neither Abby. Hello. I see, Abby! Good bean. <laughs> I see a good bean too. Hey. They are known as an Avi. Uh, okay, wait, why are there two shades now? <laughs> oh, Why'd no. you tell him? <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, you can't do that. I didn't give you my name. I'm not a faithful. Thank you. Also, hello, sweetheart. I, you, you, good bean. Ah. I am. I am doing. I'm going to be doing a silly. I. All right. Let me. Let me just get you. Get you guys here. Yeah. But yeah, I was actually um, uh, for a little while, I was in. Uh, I was one of the best COD players out there. And then I stopped giving a fuck about COD because it was just the same game over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, that's how things were with me and Warframe and me and Armored uh, Armored Warfare. Hmm. Because Armored Warfare, you can only play you know various armored vehicles on the same five maps fifty thousand times before you're like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. I. Um... And then wa with Warframe, I um, <clears throat> I ran out of things to do i'm and running out of things I, to do i i ran out of things to do in an online free to play <laughs> what does that tell you about how many hours i put into that game not as many as i put into age of empires 2 i want to compare numbers you're not gonna win i've been playing age of empires 2 since i was four and i used to know life and i'm past thirty thousand hours i'm past thirty one thousand actually now Yeah, I'm sorry, Tanya. He's going to beat you. No, no, just, 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 Sim, oh, Sim, you, Sim. Oh, Tal Tal just... Tal Tal you, you said the word that triggered steel. You you, you okay. brought steel out of the woodworks. No, but, okay, what happened? Okay, I just... You, okay, it, 
Okay. Age of Empires 2. Hey, look, I am an Age of Empires 2 super fan. Okay. Okay. Look, yeah, still loves that game. Juan, let's let Tanya speak. Sorry. I can't even remember what I was going to say now. I had a good punchline lined up, but then I was, you know. The fucking disc. I played single player for tens of thousands of hours. Okay, oh, well, you, you, can you we get that. back to the focus of this stream, please? <laughs> how, to key, how, how to use protection for your Discord servers? Yeah, there is that as well, but... Um, are you good on that now, Seda? Um, I will just need a few more minutes. I'm just typing up a just a little announcement to my server because okay. um, we have we ha we have made a, a couple changes to alleviate things, and um, it's going to be a little bit longer because I because I've been turned into a were rhino. Mm. Yeah, I guess that would make it a little bit harder. Type type type. Just, just to hold a pencil in your mouth and then use that to type. It's easier than, you know, trying to use the big old rhino paws. Rally row. Thank it's you, Warning. Wow. You, you said where and it summoned him. Yeah, I got to, Zila turned me into a rare rhino help. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, pick. How are you gonna type with those big, big hoopers? Basically, uh, you got the big corn on your nose. Maybe I can type with that. Maybe. Tape, tape, mm -hmm. tape, tape. I've been looking at my Discord. I'm not even sure what to even do with my Discord at this point. It's very, very dying. <laughs> Uh, taking off the day to visit. Oh. Bye, Merle. Have a good night. Good night, Merle. My Discord server doesn't really have a purpose anymore since I stopped. I haven't been streaming and I don't host game servers anymore. Which no. was its original purpose. No. Duke. I don't even have a Discord, so I can't exactly give you advice. Yeah. I mean, I will say it does it takes it does take time. Yeah, I still have two hundred and fifty members, but they're just no one's really active anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hello there, Lobo. How you doing? I don't even use my own Discord for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like originally my Discord was kind of a backup of of another of another Discord and later it just became it just became later its own entity and it I I'm still figuring out what to do with with mine. But just I was just saying just give it time, you know. It will you know it you you it, 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 it like it, it'll it, like it usually works itself out usually. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. I don't really care about it until like you know I start screaming again that it'll have yeah. a purpose again. But until then, it's like eh, whatever. I know uh, Woe just uses my Discord for his stream stuff. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm doing like, good. We, yeah, good to hear. We used to hang out in my Discord a lot, but then like. You know, with the amount of people I have in my Discord, I, I couldn't just, like, hang out in the open anymore in, like, a general voice -y. I'm a puppy. Because I'd have interesting characters join. So we made a secret VC, like, a secret role that of a secret VC that was hidden. And then we just kind of stopped using that, and we just made a friend Discord. <laughs> now we just have a private friend Discord that we hang out in. We don't even use my Discord for that anymore. <laughs> So actually getting to the, uh, you know, the whole point of the stream, so on and so forth. Um, the only, only way that I could think of to phrase that opening sentence would be uh, uh, flowery forwards aside, rather than flowery appetizers out of the way. 
Well, the reason the flower appetizer thing is there is because the meat of it would be the entree. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's it's I that was lost on me. I'm writing this uh, document from the perspective of Greaves. Oh. What? Uh, this is summer, right? <laughs> yeah, this is summer. Um, Greaves is a flavor that I have not been able to... Uh, well, I haven't had any attempts at uh, replicating. So I don't know if I could really help with um, the phrasing on anything. <laughs> One just does their own thing for Greaves anyways. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> He's a man of many hats. In well, fact, he has all of the hats available at affordable prices. All right, let's see right here. Oh, right, like uh, this here. Should be good. Okay. okay. All right, Lexi. Does the does it reach over there? Want to? Oh no, I don't think it did. It does. Heck. You know, I I have to agree with Greaves there. Gnomes are far more fun than humans. I mean, they're small enough you can fit them into a cannon. Or uh, or you know, fling them on a on a. Uh, or, or fling them in a, in a windmill. I would say a barrel, but that's reserved for dwarves. Yeah. Barrels are the domain of dwarves. <laughs> I mean, what else would they, would they do with their ale barrels that they uh, that they empty out? Oh. What, why do I get the feeling that um, barrel rolling is a sport that the dwarves participate in? Uh, Taldarius, please make note of, uh, the, uh, stream there. Make note of the what? Uh, that last line I just wrote. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, John, you have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out. So, basically, what you're saying, Zim, what you're saying is that, um, you're abusing your power... 
And I should never interact with Greaves again. So much for your golden ticket. You can still scrap that for 500 resources. They currently do have a Greaves card. Okay, a light chuckle for you all. I, t I type in moderation settings and I accidentally put an extra E, so it's mod deeration settings. Haha, ha, uh -huh. deer uh -huh. now. I'm 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 gonna rename Seriously. all my moderators to mod moderators. Oh no! You're, what that means? You're gonna turn all of us into deer. Exactly. Uh, oh yeah, I will un I will unpin that. Aha! Uh -huh. I think I'm escaping. Also, that hey there, Chrysopos. How you doing? You know, I'm watching. I'm over here watching Zim being possessed by the spirit of Graves, and the only thing that I can think of is Graves. You're not the only one that can warp the fabric of space and time. I haven't been this pleased with a group and of they're just fine. Since the That's good here. Sent the price of turnips through the roof during the onion famine. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, are you looking at the stream right now? <laughs> no. I played the Djokovic card. <laughs> you know that that's supposed to only be used during the game. Aw, you're being mean. No, I'm not gonna be pulling up my document filled with Djokovic's ramblings just for wait, you. Wait, to wait, be wait, 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 wait. Those are scripted. What do you mean? I have like 20 of them written down and I just choose one at random. Okay, Zim for realsies. Yeah. Actual five minutes now. I'm just going to go make a cup of tea and I'll be right back and I'll be ready to go. I've finished everything on my end. How else okay. would I count to 25 words? I, oh, okay. I figured that you were just sprinkling those in wherever they felt right. No, that's whenever uh, he has to pull out a new scroll. <laughs> What's up, uh, Abby? No, no, it it's all right. I, yeah, it's all, it's 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 all right. Sorry. Are you still streaming, by the way? Yes. Good. Why aren't you showing up on my follow list? I should have you on my follow list. Oh, where is the Abby on my follow list? Show more. Ah, there's the Abby on my follow list. Oh, okay. Uh, it's actually, uh, hey. Also that. Oh, hey. It's, uh, hey. Also, hey, hey there, hey there, laser. How you doing? There, you got my last fourteen biddies. Uh, <laughs> did it have to? Thank, thank, thank you, thank you for the fourteen biddies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, we took the 14 to get multiple A's and the heck out of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Abby definitely is the best, uh, the best biddies oh. you can spend on Twitch. Absolutely. Yeah, he makes very interesting noises. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just I, 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 you don't have to. It's just, I, I, I'm just... Sadly, I spent the last of my uh, videos, um, you know, uh, doing doing the forbidden ASMR for, towards Zim. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm just I can't do thing. this though. Oh, oh, the heck! Ah. Tanya, thank you so much for the follow. Oh, I was just listening to my uh, my favorite. Um... It's children's YouTube channel song called Reach for a Cop's Gun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alright. Javi, are you doing well? Hey, Matt. How you doing? I uh, need to find a specific number of biddies that we can throw without breaking him. Look, it, it, I put it in Skyler. The... Skyler. That's like the most... That's like the... That's like... That's the thing. I... It doesn't... I don't think it matters. It, it's just more or less the scale of I think at this point, just breaking a little. 
to like infinitely breaking me. I don't think there's I don't think there's a way I don't think there is a limit. I, or, I don't I don't think there's a there's a, there's an amount. I mean like I I just I just I I just you don't have to get like I just, I'm already getting fucked. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't talk. I can't. I I can't talk. Um, but it, it's just more or less of like you know, I I, I, I appreciate it. Like honestly, just honestly, just like again, like you guys just being here for tonight, especially going on to like, just it, it, that does all. That's all like that's all I care. And I fell asleep and outside, and I forgot what time it was in Sardu. So Skylar, uh, Goofy. To translate for Abby here, any amount of biddies will break him. Even no biddies, because you can just talk about giving him support and he breaks. I, this this no. does raise an interesting question, though. This does raise a very interesting question. Obviously, any amount of biddies will break him. However, what amount of biddies will cause him to generate a secure password? I'd guess a hundred. Sadly, I don't have any at the moment to test that. <laughs> I should generate a. I mean, like, I could pause. You could just turn on. You could just. You could just turn on like close, close captioning, and then it will probably generate a password from that. Doing it. Doing it. Turning on close captioning. <laughs> it's, it's like. I, I, <laughs> I, I feel I hey. feel like it's Hey there old pal. Uh yes, me okay, I'm is back very cute. And, and Sierra, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome on in everyone. Hello. Fox rule when a fox eighty seven when a fox servers, their fur will double in thickness and filthiness will prevent hypothermia. Fox rule four twenty. Whenever a fox feels excess amounts of happiness, the fox must yip excessively. Good evening Rao. to Epic. Um yeah. So I, I, I turned on the subtitles, and what it got as it's struggling is, uh, it's like, it's like, I feel, it's, it's, I feel, I feel, it's like, oh it's my hello. God. <laughs> <laughs> hey. uh, mean, go ahead, just... say it, uh, real quick for the rain cool. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then we have another fox world. They say that the average fox is 100 feet tall. This is because of nine of Kitsune, who lives in outer space and is approximately 12 parsecs tall. They are a statistical outlier and should not have been counted. Fox rule 37. Everyone who creates a fox rule becomes a fox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that rule. That's a good one. I but Seer, I hope your art stream went well. I saw a couple of the doodles you were working on earlier. Please remember to take care of yourself. And thank you for bringing everyone in. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Sado. Full-time internet werewolf, part-time noodle dragon. And we like to keep the vibe nice and chill around here. And over those of you on mine or Zibs and, and aren't already following Sierra, aka when wolves cry out, she's a heckin' amazing bean, go follow her. Go follow that bean. Right there. Look at that heckin' amazing sphinx. Slash noodle dragon. What a good sphinx. Ow, and I just burnt my hand on tea. Not me eating salsa. <laughs> yeah, that's a that laser, that is a mood sometimes. It is it 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 be a mood. But yeah, uh, Tanya, I have like 20 of Jakovich's ramblings on a on a document that I bring up and choose a random one when a card's used. That way I know exactly how many messages he how many words he gets in before he has to use another scroll. But yeah, laser. I will say though, like I don't. I, I, I will say like eating chips, like eating chips and salsa, or just like eating anything at like eleven, like past, like close to midnight. It just makes the food taste a lot better. That it does, and also everyone coming in on Sierra stream. What we're doing tonight is I'm doing some city skylines, and we're also just chat, hanging out, uh, hanging out and chatting. Um, Abby, you're still streaming, right? Yes, I am still streaming. Okay, let me I actually. Switched. I switched over to uh, to some Stardew Valley, just uh, something something nice and chill. Very nice. I'm gonna just update you Stardew there. Good. Old pal, mute and epic. Thank you for the boop. And Sierra, thank you so much for the hug. I really need you to give you a custom hug of that one. Hmm. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, so I'm doing some city skylines. We're kind of talking a little bit about like tabletop systems and stuff like that. A custom hug. Yeah, I really should give you a custom color in that one. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah, so make sure you're comfortable. Enjoy the chill vibes. We're going to be going for next little hour or so. Yeah, now, now, now that I'm back from moderation land, how are you? Um, Zim, are you doing a thing? I was uh, taking care of a couple of things on stream loots. Yeah, but I'm back to this. I <laughs> know. Uh, uh, it was. <laughs> no, I, I, I just noticing what you did on your your chat. I approve. Oh, the message Greaves was writing to Tanya? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's fine. It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll find various ways that I can punch Zim down the road. Uh, Sierra, <laughs> I don't care if you didn't raid me. I am all for spreading the word about wonderful beans. And you are a wonderful bean. Sierra is more than a heck of a wonderful bean. Sierra is an amazing bean. Yeah, she is a very good Sphinx. Ten out of ten Sponks. Yep, and we also have the yes. Abbey here. Mm. Those you don't see a lot of Sphinxes. There's there's certain cryptids that you just don't see a lot in the furry community. Oh, you don't really see a lot of Sphinxes <laughs> with like human faces, like uh, Sierra's characters. Mm-hmm. Gotta gotta have the human face, otherwise it's just a cat up with wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is true. Yes, Jaffer, I of course remember Koo. All right. I um, I recently made a um, a Sphinx stumble, which is a a mer leopard uh Sphinx, which I need to uh, actually get the rough done for. I'm trying to figure out what the coloring of it still. Did I lose any did I lose any tools in the stream? I did not. I promise you this time I have all my tools with me. Alright. Because I, so, because if I did oh, oh. go ahead, finish. Oh I was oh I was supposed to say like hopefully this time I won't lose my watering can and you know not have it on the other side of the entire map here. <laughs> yeah, Sierra, the human face scares the furries. But right. yeah, I will say though. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Seda, Tadarius, you both here? Yep. I am here. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> so, wait, why is that off to the side like that? Oh, okay. There we go. Um, so I like the way attributes are handled for advancing them. You know, they are the milestone system thing. Yep. Um, I like how the uh, skills are handled with XP. The merits and expertise system feels a little awkward. Um, I do know that I, I I know Kerr in particular has said multiple times that he's not fond of the three stat system that we've got. Uh, I like it because the point of the expertise is kind of to emulate, kind of meant to show how you're doing a thing rather than just, yeah, it's, uh, you know, body and brawl. No, instead you're attempting to punch them in the gut with a body cunning brawl or something like that. You know? Yeah. Um, so I don't really want to get rid of the expertises, but I will definitely agree advancing them is a little awkward. Um, with the merits in particular. Something I was thinking is basically the storyteller can give out uh it can basically say hey all right you guys are able to get some more merits after that adventure 
And one thing that was tossing around in my head was a three, two, one kind of thing. You get to put three right. points into one, two in another, and one into a third merit. Yeah, um, the three, two, one actually does seem like a formula that would work. Yeah, three, two, one's probably a good uh, version. Thinking about it, that's uh... main skill, major skill, minor skill. I've actually I've seen other games use that very effectively. Admittedly, those were um, video games, not tabletops, but. <clears throat> Still. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the math right now. Just give me a second. So that would be per adventure, correct? Yeah, basically per mission. It'll, it'll be oh. the same as what we currently have, except they'll actually get one more point. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I was just trying to think about, like, you know, um, the control over it, how much that affects it. And um, so the maximum that we're allowing in terms of right now for expertise is up to five. And in order to get that up, it, like, let's say you just wanted to rush up fight as fast as possible, for example. Uh, it would take at least 17 adventures for you to be able to do that. Oh, we lost both Tanya and Wernie. Huh. Well, yeah, um, um, it, it'll be 17. Could you actually just explain just expertise in general? Because I'm trying not to get lost here because I want to... Okay. I want all, all of us to be able to give good feedback, but I'm actually trying to understand the system itself. Okay. So we have three sets of stats. We have attributes... Uh, which are the body, mind, soul. And then they also have the secondary ones of the... Uh, vigor the and second willpower. Vigor and willpower, thank you. But on top of that... Uh, and then, of course, we have skills. You know, brawl, perception, uh, those kinds of things. But then we have expertises. The idea of the expertise is to give flavor to your actions. Because, like, most systems, you, you're... Most systems that use dots are two stats. You know, you're rolling an attribute and a skill. Or whatever they may call it. Like, I think uh, World of Darkness is ability. But either way... Um, you, you roll two stats, and it's like, okay, strength plus brawl to uh, determine how hard you hit them. But in our system with the expertises, you can go a step further with that. Because in those ones, it's just, yeah, you punch them. That's it. Uh, whereas in this one, you can just punch them by using fight. Or you could punch them in the gut by using cunning instead of fight. Uh, you could try and trip them uh, using, uh, it could be cunning or perhaps logic for the trying to control the, si the uh, battlefield a bit more. However you want to flavor your actions. Um, yeah, so it, it's basically the flavor that you that you're putting on it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so that one's more up to the player in a vacuum. However, it is still entirely possible that a storyteller will call for a specific thing, or if you're trying to do something like a combo move, you're locked into using teamwork. Okay, so like if. I'm understanding correctly, so you know you have your, your your core attribute. Like, let me look at the document here again. Like, um, might be easier to pull up the uh, character sheet. That is actually probably also valid. Yeah, which I do need to update, and I'm going to be. It's just I've been 
trying to put it off because it's really hard to do it on my uh, do anything on my laptop keyboard. But uh, at this point, I think I just kind of need to. Okay, so you have the five attributes: body, mind, soul, vigor, willpower. Yep. The first three being the more like characteristic ones, and then the vigor, willpower being those like kind of like those secondary attributes that you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, which we will and, be separating those a little on the sheet. Yeah. And then you have the expertise, which I'm assuming is also including the natural skills, trained and knowledge skills. Uh, those are the skills. So expertise is uh, like section two. Okay, section two. Okay. Might need a different color or spacing for that then. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, maybe, but it's... We're a little bit strapped for space. That is fair. I mean, that's kind of also where I said, like, maybe, like, color or something. Well, the I'm problem with that... The, well, the problem with changing the color would be it would mess up with the... mess up the overall theme on the sheet. Fair. Um... But... E either way, like, the design of the sheet aside... <laughs> yeah. The design so of the, things the, aside... <laughs> <laughs> We're looking the, at so the question, yeah. So the question at the hand of the mechanics is that typically what you would do, I'm assuming, is that you might have your storyteller be like, okay, roll an attribute, expertise, skill, to maybe yes. roll a body, fight, athletics kind of skill. Yes. Yeah. I'd be for like okay. trying to do like a trip or something. Yeah. Okay. And so the question at hand is, should the expertise be capped at five or should it be something else? No. Uh, the five so, cap is good because it brings us to 20 total. Yeah. Okay. Possible. So the question at hand, um, one, do we keep the expertise? Like, do we just keep those or do away with them altogether? Mm -hmm. Uh, Kerr in particular was saying just get rid of them. I really like adding that flavor to it. Um, we may rename some of them to make them more. Uh... We'll put that aside for now. Yeah, that discussion, I, but I would, I would say that might be something in addendum. Essentially, if like essentially once we get the once the core is kind of kind of resolved first. And, flat, and kind of like polished to a point i feel like expertise can be added on to you know in in that in that mm -hmm. stage but i would no. just say for me one thing that i want to bring up for that though is that uh if expertise is included like this it would be a core mechanic yeah because everything I, would be balanced around expertises being would, there or not being there so either mm. they have to be there or they aren't yeah. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, like um, like you know in the Pokéball system how we had the um fight survival contest, like secondary attribute skill. Yeah. Uh so the expertise is filling that role. Yeah, in okay. this case. Okay. However, in this case, it's more about how you're doing it instead of like in poker roll where it's just yeah, you if you're rolling a uh, what was it? Fight survival contest? Yeah. If if you're rolling a skill under the survival tree, the survival one, you're always rolling it. But in this case, you get to, you as a player get to decide what expertise you're rolling. Um, the storyteller Unless can... The storyteller calls yeah, the, something. the storyteller can spe uh, specify, but ideally it's up to the player. Yeah. Uh, there is um, only a couple things where you are locked into doing one thing in particular, and one of those would be um, combo moves. Yeah. Or you have to use teamwork. But either way, um, basically every almost every role is the combination of three stats. An attribute, an expertise, and a skill. Uh, the main question that I'm at, getting at is, one, do we keep expertise or remove it? The other question is, if we do keep expertise, 
how do we handle increasing them? But um, we'll we'll settle the first question first. Yeah, I'll say that uh, me personally, I'm fairly in favor of expertise as it adds another layer of granularity and specifically about character customization. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that I like it um, outside of because, you know, we can balance it with or without expertise is there. But I like the granularity and options it adds. Same. But as new players to the uh, system, or soon to be new players to the system, your feedback are, is very valuable on this, uh, Seda and Abby. Says, Sorry to interrupt yeah. oh, wait. for a second, guys. I think this can be called done. How's it looking? Not sure how else to improve this, so let me know. Oh, what wait, what? Think. Oh, wait, what? Uh, Mirai. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was Mirai playing a card. That looks incredible. All right, let me tab in to see. Oh, yeah, that looks amazing. Holy crap. That looks fantastic. Yeah, I think that's definitely going to be chapter one title cover page thing. What I'm thinking is, is that I'll have the cover for this, like this full version as the cover. And then later pages will have a more uh, washed out version of it. More, yeah. I guess, transparent or something along those lines. But the the opacity, all that, yeah. Yeah. But that looks amazing. Thank you so much, Mirai. Yeah, that is really cool. So now I guess we can move over to the art wheel. Uh, does anybody else want on it yet uh, tonight? Before we do our first spin. Unless you're feeling done after that, Mira, I understand if so. Star Wolf Skin says, you're welcome. I enjoy playing with painting, looking forward to working on more of these. As for spins, I can probably work on just one tonight. Alrighty. One spin to win them all. And in the darkness, bind them. I mean, what? I'll get up. Alright. So if you're wanting on this wheel... Please let me know now before I spin. We got Seda with a Crown's Redemption. We got Robert and we've got Orca so far. Odds are looking very good for anybody that wants on. Yep. Also, what I'm hearing is, is, um, so Zim, you want Dragomoss to make a couple of rings, I hear? Who is Dragomas? Kurt, uh, Kimo's dad. Oh, no. No, you don't want him to go ahead and make some rings? No. <laughs> It'd be fun, he'd give them out. But the question is, do you like it? Because you know, if you like it, you gotta put a ring on it. Have you put a ring on Abby yet? I mean, we put him through a few rings. <laughs> no, that doesn't count. You have to put a ring on it. Okay. Definitely could not say that on Twitch. Not going to go to that route. <laughs> oh, no. What did I... What, what have I opened? What have I opened? I will message it privately. I'm scared. Sweetheart, I'm scared. Hold me. That's okay. Now there, you piqued there, my curiosity. There, there. But uh, yeah, Taldarius. Um, so Dragomass, is he open to deals? Potentially, uh, you know, expanding the spy Ready network to onto certain ships. 
<laughs> I think may I think uh that should be conversations that would happen in game. But uh, before we get too distracted, um, yeah, like you know the kind of the this kind of is really a fundamental question on the entire system. Like, I know if we look at like some other classical uh, tabletops, you'd have um um you know you'd have your skills that are so directly associated with certain stats and. One of the reasons why I like the dot system is that it kind of opens up that flexibility of, you know, yeah, I could do. Actually, I'm just trying to look at like some of the skills here. An example, like. You know, we can do an investigation. We could do a very thoughtful investigation that uses the mind, but we could also do an investigation that's just, you know, literally flipping things over and, you know, flipping tables, you know, which will yeah. probably use more body. And I, I feel I feel like the expertise as they stand adds in a certain flavor onto that. Um, like, obviously, you have here the expertise of, like, cunning, innovation, instinct, logic. You know, I could... I could do an investigation that is more just blind in there flipping tables over just trying to f like follow the instinct of okay if i was hiding something where would it go put in there but i could see like avi doing an investigation that's more mind and is following a lot of logic yeah but we're doing the same skill and it also helps flavor if you want to be like uh you know going with the investigation um example do you want to be more like sherlock or columbo just like you know as an example because that, that i don't know columbo Ah well, d don't worry about it. It, it. I mean, if it, I mean, from from the sounds of it as well, it kind of gives that flexibility for those players. Like the more I'm kind of hearing about it, if it gives a, it, it definitely will give players more flexibility. And also with the, and I think especially with this system, where role playing is kind of needed, yeah, I would say that this is something that, then I would agree that adding that. Um, would adding that feature would be would be really good because he, I, I because in the player side right like i feel like sometimes i feel like there's some systems where you're kind of well and i would say like with most systems that i i, I have currently looked into more or less it's just kind of like i feel like with some some sets it's like you're strictly to use those like use those skill sets but there's like, but I feel like those skill sets should be a little bit more like, especially like investigation and, um, like like investigating or like kind of like getting your character to kind of get into that kind of um, you know, the part of that curiosity and also just like observation. I think that you know, it kind of widens the the amount of players that can actually, like, it's kind of like the type of characters that can actually participate. Because there's this, I feel like there's some characters where. It's you know they want to partake into it, but they can't because they strictly you know in some systems they strictly ask for those roles that that may you know be disadvantaged on them. So it, it just kind of like blocks them out. If you know what I, I mean. Like, I think you actually have really good. You you yeah. kind of had a good note there, sweetheart. Like it's just having the expertise in there opens up the opportunities for players who would normally be disadvantaged in a certain situation. Yeah, kind of like the fighter trying to make a perception check in D and D. Uh, you know, they were forced to use wisdom with it. Meanwhile, you know, a fighter that's built into fight, they would have that battlefield uh, awareness that comes with the fight expertise. That would they could still use perception as a result. Yeah, or they could and use it on insight. For example, where like you know they can like they can see the muscles tensing on like whoever they're mm -hmm. talking to to show that they're tense even though they're trying to act cool. And sometimes so, um, it could just be, and sometimes it could just be like pure instinct too. Like sometimes, like sometimes you have that gut feeling, like just sometimes you just go with that battlefield awareness. But so, like, um, the reason that I was real bringing quick, up the whole, uh, what are you trying to say, Tanya? I was trying to say a thing ever since he was talking about the different types of detectives. He said you can either be Sherlock or Columbo. I was going to say, uh, well, what if I want to be Rockford? 
<laughs> but uh, I was just gonna explain the whole Sherlock or Columbo thing, where like, for example, like Sherlock would be logic, where like you know he looks at like a bunch of facts and clues and stuff, and like extrapolates data and uses that. And then Columbo is uh, was uh, from a TV show, and he goes in and talks to a bunch of subjects and uh, is like really social and waits for them to accidentally say something incriminating while he makes, like, inane small talk in the meantime, talking about his wife and stuff like that. And then Rockford just huh. spends most of his time being human bait. Yeah. But, you know, I, I was just giving it as an example of, like, they do the same job, but different ways. It's kind of like, yeah, Columbus uses, like, charisma, essentially. Yeah, so he, he'd of... be using the social expertise. Hmm. All right, so I think we're all in agreement. Keep expertise. Yeah, so, I, I, I just, I, I just really like what options it gives to players in terms of like you know character flavoring or even just, uh, like not fucking people over if they haven't specifically statted out their like innovation or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like it actually like. I can see the reasons why it would be potentially complicating because, you know, hey, it's a third thing you have to roll. But the thing that I actually like about it is that it kind of allows you to customize your character in a way like, you know, you'd have someone yeah. who, you know, because, you know, there are how many skills there? There are 24 uh, different skills at the moment. And yeah, because that's something that I've uh, that really annoys me about some systems is how you can have this character just completely and totally build around athleticism and acrobatics, and they are the most physically fit they can possibly be. But because you didn't take any points in parkour, you're going to trip over that tiny fence. Yeah, and I feel like the attributes cover some of that, but then also I feel like the expertise is like a soft barrier to that where, yeah. Maybe it does make sense for me at this stage to, you know, put all my points into science or into negotiation or whatever. But, hey, maybe I could put a, a couple of my points in the logic yeah, because, uh, you know, it's, it would cover it, it's kind of a increase my broader skills. Yeah. And uh, just for just for clarity purposes, um, I believe right now the way that we have merits working and expertise is for the gaining of expertise is that um, when you reach 10 ain't a new one but we'll come back to one. that stuff in a moment uh yeah. real quick one last call for the wheel mirai's only doing one piece tonight so if you want on this wheel get on now I give you guys about a minute and then I'm going to spin the wheel. And we'll continue the discussion after I handle all that stuff. All right. Because, yeah, the, the merit system is the next thing that I want to bring up and discuss. Yeah. Which I have a couple ideas for, but, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I understand that uh, it's a little bit unwieldy right now in general when it comes to expertise, but I don't think that's the system's fault, per se. I just think it's the fact that, you know, we're still putting everything together. I, I think it's also more the fact that it's a unique thing to this... Well, not necessarily unique to this system. Well, actually, yes, it is, because the only other system I know of that has three stats is Poke Roll. And in poker roll, you're still locked into your rolling survival. Well, or you're looking, you're trying to roll alert while well, you're rolling survival with it. It's very rigid on that. Yeah. Whereas for us, it's meant to be a, it's a cushion instead of a, okay. It's a cushion instead of a bridge. Maybe a bridge isn't the right... You know what I mean, though. Yeah. All right, let's spin this wheel! Oh, uh, Sushi, you have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for stopping by as well. 
and take care and I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you have a wonderful start to your weekend. Congratulations, Orca Commander. Please message me what you would like on Discord. And thank you, everybody, for entering. Uh, those that didn't win, I will refund your points later. Uh, so that way you can use them again next time. And then I'll take care of that and we'll get into the next stuff. Bye. So I'm completely spacing. What was the uh, topic just before spinning the wheel? Uh, that we're going to be talking about the uh, next thing to do with expertise when he's done spinning the wheel. Right, right. Um, yes, the thing I was going to say is that, um, yeah, like the survival, for example, is that in some systems you end up with that one trait that just does everything. So why would you use anything? Why would you have something spiked for anything else? Which ends up restricting players because you end up having those mandatory spends that you must invest in that skill otherwise you're completely screwed yeah and in this one there's a there's a little bit of the other side of the coin where like you know technically speaking uh someone can just like use their best expertise for everything and that's not always a bad thing but you know i i think the argument for that is that it just helps people flavor their characters better yeah, but because uh, I'm he... talking about this because I'm the power gaming guy where, you know. Yeah, I'm still going to allow that, though, but um, I I'm just wanting to hold off so I can stay focused on the conversation when we get to that. Because uh, I, I don't want to get sidetracked and such. Alright, Mirai, I've sent that off to ya. Okay, so, the expertise and merits. Um, to go over briefly, uh, well, probably not so brief, considering me, but anyways. To go over the way the system works, uh, Seda and Avi. Uh, the... Your attributes are on a milestone system. 
Uh, whenever the storyteller believes you have completed enough uh, enough of the story, a particular major story beat, you know, that is when the storyteller will be like, all right, you've all earned an attribute point. And then you can go put that dot wherever you want. Yeah. Skills are purchased using experience points. Uh, they're leveled up with your experience. Um, Skills and specialties. And specialties. Uh, I'll, I, I'll explain specialties. Uh, I'll go ahead and explain them now a little bit. Brief summary. Specialties are basically each skill can have more to it than just the, uh, the skill itself. So, for example, with science, you can have a specialty for biology. Uh, with integrity, you can have a specialty for uh, kind of showing your knowledge for using light armors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They give an additional bonus for more specific circumstances that they're used. Yeah. So, like, you know, I have a... I have a bird character named Vane, who's a Murkrow, who I gave a, uh, a Perception Sight specialty to. So, those aside, skills are leveled up with experience. You get experience every uh, level, or every uh, session. Expertise is... Currently, the way... Well, real quick, say to Avi, you two still with me so far? Yep. Yep, so basically uh -huh. attributes are milestone-based and skills expertise are experience-based. So you kind of... Uh, not no. expertise, specialties. Just specialties. So just, so just the, um, just the skills. Specific. So essentially... Yeah. Skills and specialties are XP-based, and now we're on to the, how you get up expertise. Okay, I'm. I'm actually. I'm going to be honest. Just as a follow-up question, what's the difference between the skills and the specialties? Okay, that's why I wanted to make sure you guys were on the same page here. Specialties. <laughs> I clearly had the same page. <laughs> um, specialties are more spec, more specific, more specialized skills. Like for skills, we have the general skill of science. But science is a very broad subject. You know, you got biology, you've got uh, geography, th all of these different, uh, uh, the environmental sciences, you know. Um, you've got all of these other things that go into, sci that are under the blanket of science. Uh, the specialties allow you to reflect those specializations. So, so it's, with if I I'm oh, sorry, so just like for my so just so I understand here, it's more or less it's essentially it's a specific subset within the attribute within the skills, yes. Within the oh, skills. within the skills, okay. So, yeah. so if, if I let's say for example, I had a trained skill in melee, but I want to have a specialties in katanas. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good way to put it. You know, and it you gives call you it like. You picking up any weapon at all would use your melee skill, but you'd get a bonus if you're using katanas because you have a specialty in it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I would say, if you don't mind, uh, do you want no, please you want go for us, dear. I will say that the one issue I can see with that is that the the specifics itself, because because of the idea of you know, like like. It, I guess it's more or less that the the biggest worry for me is is that what are the chances of using said those specialties, right? Like, for example, when are you gonna get like for example, like what is the like how commonly are you gonna use that expertise in those situations? Because if it's like very rarely used, it kind of just like defeats the purpose of having it in the first place. Um, so. I guess. Oh yeah, go ahead. Um, when it comes to uh, specialties, you start with one off the bat, which is meant to represent kind of your background, uh, the background of the character. 
Uh, Squirrel has a specialty for evasion called ADHD. Um, and literally, it's just a matter of he gets a bonus to his evasion because he is constantly getting distracted. He is looking this way and that and moving and shifting. So his hyperactivity gives him a bonus on evasion because, well, not even he knows where he's going to be five seconds from now. <laughs> um, yeah. And then the other vain. example... Uh, Vane, he's a bird, he's got very good eyesight, so he has a specialty under perception for eyesight, for sight. So whenever he rolls a perception check based on sight, he gets a bonus. Some specialties will not be used that often. Um, originally I we... God, sorry. Originally, so we did have it a different tiers of specialties, but we did away with that because that was just extra complication on top of everything. But when it comes to those specialties, it's up to you on whether you want to take them. Like a lot of players, it's not a required thing, except for some specific circumstances. For example, with science, you can have good general science knowledge, but if that particular, like, you're dealing with something to do with biology and you don't have a biology specialty, you do get a penalty because of that. Um, but that is up to the storyteller to even implement in the first place and use. Um, but... Um, as far as how often they'll be used, it all depends on the specialty. Yeah. Like a sight-based uh, perception yeah. one, used all the time. Squirrel's ADHD evasion, used all the time. Um, I feel like uh, that's that's kind of the issue, and I think that's kind of the issue I may have, is because the risk that I feel that there is, might be some there may be some imbalances regarding to that, especially like you may have, for example, like for that ability, that might be more used com more constantly than other people who may have that, you know, like who may have more specifics. And I feel like that might also, and, and my issue is just like, because of that bonus, I feel like, like especially if they're trying to make their character like special and like they want to like utilize that like it's like especially if it's like very if it's niche i feel like that would kind of you know make i, I can definitely can i can feel like some issues with like people would feel like how come like this person like kind of like is a little bit more broader and is constantly used than to like my you know character that has like something that's a little more specific and rarely used so and i know it's, it's kind of dependent on the storyteller but I feel like in the story the storyteller's perspective, I feel like that's just adding a lot more work for them. And, you know, regarding to that, it just kind of... that, it, it, And that's just kind of my initial gut reaction to that. So, um... Yeah, but uh, I do want to say that real quick, on the other hand, um, like many sessions ago, I picked up a specialty for foraging... Uh, uh, for foraging like you know safe to eat food and identifying poisonous food and stuff like that um i have yet to use that specialty at all but uh the reason that that got picked up is specifically because there's one person on the uh in the group who will eat anything that they get their hands on if given half the chance so the worry was is that while traveling around you know that character would pick up something poisonous and eat it so my character wanted to pick up a foraging specialty so that way he could make sure that the food that he's like grabbing out of somewhere is safe for him to eat. Right. So I, it, I, it, it's I, a little bit of an expectations thing too. I have one question before raising my concerns. How do you go about acquiring specialties? As far as uh, so for... That, uh, for 
acquiring specialties. Ideally, they are something that you role play out. Uh, and the storyteller is welcome to adjust the base cost. By default, the cost is uh, 15 XP. However, uh, for example, with Squirrel, he went and kind of apprenticed under a smith. I'm just generalizing it, Taldarius, it, you know. Yeah. Um, he went and apprenticed under a smith and uh, specifically was like, hey, show me how to do this so I can do it myself. And as a part of that, you know, I we role played it out and uh, Enja, the storyteller, reduced the cost of it, of uh, metalsmithing to uh, only 10 XP for him. Um, so ideally they are gained through role play, through something that you do in character. And again, the storyteller is very much encouraged to adjust the price. Uh, and I will um, absolutely put in a note that for things that are more niche that they may want to pick up to reduce it a bit more. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. one bit of context that I want to put in uh, is that uh, there is no approval needed in order to raise up your skills itself, but acquiring a specialty requires that you talk to the storyteller about it. Yes. So that is an important bit of context I feel should be mentioned is that, you know, the, there is the fact that, um, you know, a, a good way to put it is that uh, specialties are May issue. And with that, it also allows the storyteller a chance to be like, hey, just so you know, this probably will not come up at all during the sessions. Um... The storyteller does not have to implement it. They can if they want. They can allow or deny it as they want. Um, I will say that in turn... One thing I do want to point out real quick. Um, the specialties can be more broad. Like, you're not going to pick up a katana specialty. Instead, you would pick up a slashing sword specialty. Uh, I, I feel... do. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I do know that katanas are wielded differently from like a long sword, but it's an example. It, yeah. yeah, it's an example though. And we're not going to be that nitpicky. Like you have to have a katana specialty. No, it's yeah. a. I, I... Yeah. You first year. I, I essentially I would say I would say in that case then. I would say reword it just to prevent, I would just say as a safety measure to prevent that. If the player chooses to be that specific, they can. But I would just say like, you know, like a, to kind of keep it a little bit more wider range, if that's the case. Like not like as wide, but like, you know what I mean? Like a subset of that, um, essentially a, a subset of that either skill or ability then. They are meant was... to be like, uh, another example that I'll give um, for medicine. Um, you can yeah, but... one example specialty that we have for that is wounds. Wounds can encompass a lot of things. Uh, not just, you know, a sword gash. But it can also be uh, an acid burn or things like that. They... A lot of those would fall under that still. Um, they're more specific than the skill itself. But they're not as specific as I think you are thinking right. they are. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's that's what I'm trying to say. I'm like, I'm trying to say like a general, like essentially kind of like a sub, not like a direct specific thing. I'm referring to like just a general, like kind of like a little, like a, a smaller specifics, like sets. Like, oh, yeah. uh, that's that's what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm not saying like, oh, like specifically finding this one thing. Like, I'm just saying like, essentially just for my understanding and kind of it is worded properly, essentially like, 
if they're going to have like especially it's a specific i guess umbrella of of that of that top of said topic like for example like like with that like to say like swords of like fighting ability right like using items or weapon skill right and then specifically you want to you know with that kind of expertise on that with like short swords or something or pole arms kind of like that right yeah like a little bit more general but i would yeah, just say that that's, that's for weapon classes for example. yeah exactly exactly <laughs> like that's what i'm trying to like yeah like again i would say like word that and maybe even add a note to if you know in the player's discretion if they want to have very something very specific but i would just say like if we just to word it so it kind of hits that general target of like oh it's like a certain class of weapons or like oh like or like you know something like I do, that like i think yeah i do have it worded that way in the document okay okay i just wanted to make sure so like yeah. that's yeah just make sure i'm this that you know that is what you're trying to say yeah that, that is what i've got worded in the document i'm gonna go a step further i don't like it all right i think how you guys are approaching specialties overall is making things way too hecking complicated i'm looking at the character sheet here and you're taking up i'd say a good quarter of the character sheet with these specialties um mm -hmm. well, it was also the back yeah uh like my recommendation is i don't hate the idea of specialties but i think they should be reworked because you have dedicated a section of the character or huge chunks okay. of the character sheet here real quick i do want to say seda i brought this up to tell darius but he's the one that's designed this stuff as far as i'm concerned we could just have a box where you can write that's you know just specialties just have a box and you write in uh medicine wounds i I will say personally I, because oh yeah sorry I'll, I'll let you finish. Sorry. I want to clarify again, Seda. Mm -hmm. Please leave the design of things be. Right now we're focused what? on the core mechanics. Well, the, 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 uh, look, look, well, look. I I I'm using the design of the character sheet as just a asterisk to my main point okay the main mechanic that i feel like would be beneficial to improve the simplicity of the system is take out you know take out the whole ex uh, specialties for different sections have a single box for specialties and as opposed to you suffering a penalty for not having that expertise instead give it a bonus that way that specialties how oh that's how it works yeah yeah it gives a sorry bonus. that's why we specified multiple times that it gives you a bonus if you have it. yeah okay the only <laughs> the only ones which work with uh oh, giving sorry, a sorry, for, sorry for those on stream sorry i <laughs> so, sorry blah, blah, blah. no i was actually muted on my stream and i didn't realize it my bad stream yeah. okay okay um, um let, yeah. let me go ahead and take this child darius here all right there are only specific circumstances where you would receive a penalty for not having a specialty. Those are, there are very specific skills like science, where if you are dealing with something that has to do with biology, for example, a, a, a niche subject under biology, your general knowledge of science probably will not cover that that is that is a very specific and niche circumstance where you would have a penalty the chances of that coming up are relatively slim you might have a couple here and there unless your storyteller is especially uh punishing <laughs> um but as far as that goes the specialties in general are meant to give you a bonus. I will say, in regards to weapons and armor, you do have penalties for not having specialties. However, the purpose for that 
is a in specifically in the weapons and armor i have it worded as you may have the melee skill but that doesn't know that doesn't note that you have the training for full plate armor um and that's the way that I have it uh, worded in there. So you do have penalties for that. But for, in regards to that, it is more meant to be a... Uh, the specialties are kind of like feats from D&D. You know, you got to get a feat for wearing light armor. You got to get a feat for wearing medium armor. Uh, unless your class gives it to you, but that's a whole other ballpark um you know you play a wizard you're not gonna have any armor proficiencies but you can in the rules pick up light armor proficiency and then you can wear light armor without penalty but outside of that the specialties are meant to just give you an extra bonus on top of what your skill is um, another example that I can give is the crafting specialty, or the crafting skill. Craft is so fucking big. Like, there is no other way to put it. You can craft books, you can craft uh, armor, you can craft weapons, you can craft uh, metal objects of all shapes and kinds. Uh, you, you can... Uh, j j you can... Cook. Cooking is a crafting thing. Well, it's crafting um, survival. Uh, it is meant to be under craft. Yeah. But, you know, um, survival does include it. But... That's beside the point, though, Taldarius. Uh, yeah! <laughs> You're dealing with me. Yes, and I'm trying to put a little lid on your pedanticness so we don't confuse them more. Man. Um... I would just say probably like I kind of like again understanding like I understand like the purpose for it. However, I'm also kind of like thinking like that is also a lot as well. Is this is this optional? May I ask? Yeah. Is this an you, optional rule? Yeah, you don't, or you don't this... have to pick them up really. Okay. Yeah. Because I will kind of say like I will say that I feel like that might be something that might be more optional personally. Um. Because it is, it is a lot, and it, and while I can see it as it could add a lot, it, you know, utilize that character, um, you know, kind of like character background into actual effect, into like into the game. Um, I will probably say like that might be something I will say that might be a little bit more towards like maybe leaning towards an optional ruling, um, to it. Um. What do you mean? I, I mean, it, it, what I'm just trying to say is just like it is. Lo it's. I was just like, as long as like, I guess the main question was like, if it if it's if it's required, uh, but if oh. if, it, if it's optional, then yeah, then yeah, then I can, yeah, as long yeah. as uh, it's pretty much as long as it's not a pure core mechanic that has to be part of the game. Um, so I feel like that just may be an optional ruling, personally. Yeah, the specialties are like they are. The specialties are a. Core, they, they are a part of the game, but your character is not required to pick them up at any time. The only uh, exceptions on that are the uh, weapons and armor. Because you're not going to be... Mm. But that's a whole other thing, and that is... I, I went very much into detail on how that works in the document. Um, but either way, the specialties are... Wolf skin says, oh, Apologies again for the quick interruption. How's that looking for the sketch? But, uh, Anything just a point you could complete. I'll take a quick little break and come back to finishing it up. Alright. Sorry, me rice card was, uh, playing. Ah, okay. I already did for you, Orca. <laughs> I 
But yeah, you could completely ignore picking up any specialties at all whatsoever, pretty much, and just pump it right into the skills, and you'd be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. In fact, you'd, you'd be even more well-rounded and probably powerful as a character. It, to me, just still, still feels very complicated. Unnecessarily yeah. complicated. It's a, it is it does add I will say it it does add a bit of a more detail to it, but I can see I can I can understand and see the the direction for it for me. To to boil it down, they give you bonuses. That's basic. That that's the basic gist of them. Yeah. Um, it's not even complicated to figure out how much bonus. It just gives you an extra dice. Yeah, it gives you an extra die. All right, I'll pass that along to uh, Mirai Orca. Anything else to adjust? Oh, this is... Eh, I'll just leave it. I know for sure the Mortal Kombat song is copywritten, but eh, I'll just mute it out later. Um, where is this? There it is. Okay, so taking care of that. Um, either way, the main question that I was trying to get at were the expertises. Uh, we're not going to remove the specialties because they are part of the system um, and they are an optional thing. Um, moving back to the expertise. Uh, Seda, Abby, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Still here, still listening. Okay. Yeah, we just wanted to give you the context of the other <laughs> systems of improvement that are there to understand yeah. the expertise progression and context. So... Attributes level uh, they are increased with the milestone. Skills increased with uh, XP. Expertises are currently leveled up by merits. Uh, merits are uh, currently they are set up in a way where every basically at the end of each mission or story beat or some whatever. In the document, we call them adventures. Yeah, adventures. Whatever the storyteller decides to define those as, which we do specify that they can be anything. They don't necessarily have to be, hey, I'm going into a dungeon. But at the end of each of those, the storyteller gives you bonus XP, and they also give you uh, merits. Currently, you get five merits at the end of each... Uh, adventure and you are meant to put them in based on what you did during the uh uh during the uh adventure so if you did a lot of social stuff uh or nothing but social then you'd put the five merits in the social um if you did a large variety of things, you might put one in fight, one in innovation, one in instinct, one in logic, one in social. That system feels a bit awkward. Um, at least in practice. Um, in theory, it's felt good, but in practice, it's very awkward. So what we're thinking of doing is switching it over to a... Three, two, one. You put three in one, 
two and another, one and a third. And then whenever you reach 10 merits in a particular uh, expertise, you level up, uh, you get another dot of that uh, expertise. Run that by me one more time. Okay. Uh, do you want the, which specific part or the whole thing? The, the whole thing, particularly with emphasis on the leveling up expertise part. Okay. Well, okay. So 10 merits in, so each expertise, you get merits for each expertise. What are merits? Uh, they're basically XP, but uh, separated from XP. Because you can't use XP on expertise and you can't use merits on skills. Exactly. The reason for that, uh, to, like you said, you, you like the uh, defending the reasons on things, and mm -hmm. it's good to do so. Um, in mo like if everything could be leveled up with the experience. You don't have much reason to level up your skills if every role that you're making uses an expertise. You could you like if everything leveled up with XP, you know, then why are you doing the many different skills aside from them being cheaper when you could just save up a little bit more and have something that applies to a lot more roles than the skills? Especially so since the, expertises are meant to be, you pick the best one that you can fit into the situation. Yeah. So if expertise is leveled up with XP, you literally jump all of your ex your experience into one particular expertise, and you just do everything that flavored the entire game. Um, and then it doesn't matter what your skills are because you already have five dots, and you're getting five dice on every roll. Um. <clears throat> So that's my, yeah, you understand why I want to have it separate? Yes, but I think it's the wrong solution. I will say for me, and I don't know if it's maybe it's because it's very late for me to fully grasp it, I, but I, I, you kind of lost me there a little bit. So, so basically to my understanding, Attributes are milestone. We've always yep. established that. Yep. Skills are purchase fire XP. And merits are essentially a different kind of XP that can only be used on expertise. Correct. And you get that when you complete an adventure, which is generally like, you know, like a little like mini arc, like between like three to five sessions in on average. Could be longer, could be shorter, but you you finish it at the end of an adventure. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I guess the the follow up question I would have is what's the what's what's the purchase curve for let's just say skills? Like I know with like you know with our experience in the procurable system, it was like you know you had six times by how many dots you had in that skill. Yeah. Uh, um, so for this, it's five times the number you're going to. So let's say you have one in Brawl and you want to go to two Brawl. That's 10 be, XP. Okay, and then 15 XP for... The third dot, yes. Third, okay. And you can't skip tiers, so you can't go from one to three without buying two. Yeah. <sighs> Expertise I did a on whole... the other... Uh, in case you're wondering, I did do like a whole math out like thing uh, for uh, the the cost of XP stuff. Let, let, let's uh, keep things. Uh, I, I want to try and keep things more simpler for the explanation without the added, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, and again, I, I, you kind of also lost. You kind of lost me there for a little bit there as well okay. because it's. It, it's I I understand it's kind of like they kind of intertwine with each other, but also kind of not. But All right. okay. I, I won't thing. pull out my multi-page math document. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I, I feel like for me, I see what you guys are going for, where you kind of want to have a little bit more control to the storyteller about how players essentially evolve. You know, they can decide when you get an attribute. They can decide how much expertise or how much merit to give out. And they can decide, you know, based off of how you're describing it, how much experience to give out. So basically, I, you know, I as a storyteller would have the power to say, okay, well, hey, I want you guys to be spending a little bit more on your skills here as opposed to just leveling up your merits. So it's like slow down the merits, increase the skills because, okay, why would you go for an expertise when you can just go for a skill? And mm, other way around, but yes. I'm sorry, you, sorry you, 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 get, you get the point. Like, you know, why would I go for a skill when I can just like level up, put everything in expertise? Um, yeah. But I would kind of make the argument you're, at least in my view, this is increasing the workload for both players and storytellers to manage, you know, the two different XPs that they are tracking. You're calling them different things, but they're both essentially different XPs. And um, I feel like the problem you're trying to solve in terms of trying to discourage people from just putting more into expertise or just saving it from their expertise is just to... Um, adjust the cost of buying. I know flat out cost, you know, you come back with the argument of, you know, yeah, we can, you can just save up expertise for an expertise as opposed to purchasing a skill. But I feel like that reaches a limit and is probably a acceptable byproduct for simplicity. Because at the end of the day, if I have like, let's just say I have two points in logic um and maybe you make you know increasing expertise 10 experience as opposed to five per level it reaches a point where i could probably benefit myself more by putting a dot in like investigation and uh etiquette as opposed to trying to increase um dot um dots and expertise and i feel like it'd be a more elegant solution to balance the expertise skills purchasing around the experience costs themselves as opposed to trying to make an entirely different expert or experience you know co value as it were in this case the merits so, to solve that problem while i definitely understand going that route i will say that other systems that have uh it's a very common problem with these dot-based systems where players will just dump everything into the... Uh, they'll dump everything into the expertise. Like, if we were to make them, uh, you know, 10 XP per uh, dot, you know, you could get two skills... Or you can get the expertise, which you can then apply to every skill. As um, a... Just actually also looking at another thing, just as a bit of a counter suggestion. Uh, but if you want to actually finish that part first, please do so, because I'm going to kind of go in a different direction. Um... Like, I will say that it is a little bit more to keep track of, but that's why I'm wanting to simplify the keeping track of it to just a 3 to one So the storyteller just says, all right, you guys finish this adventure, and they you get those three merits for one, two for another, one for a third. It is something to keep track of, but it's on the sheet for you to keep track of it there. Which we will... Caldarius, we're going to design be simplifying this. Well, yeah, yeah but again, design but, of the sheet aside, this was just so we could have everything that we needed there. Yeah. Yeah. It's something we can I adjust. I would... I have a different thing just to suggest looking at things. Okay. Um... Because just from a design standpoint, 
would you say that the goal in some sense would be if let's just say we went to a max level game you know hypothetically somehow the adventure did not resolve and i am basically god you know we've we've maxed out all the attributes would from a design standpoint one would assume if you've gone that far where you're basically god and have 10 in every attribute that your expertise and skills will look very similar yes uh, yes i uh, i'm not gonna pull up the math page but i did the math page because I would just looking at this, you have five attributes that have um, ten total dots, yep. and you have eight expertise that have five total dots. So you have five, or sorry, fifty dots total of attributes and forty dots total of expertise. As a simplified measure, why don't you just tie the attributes and expertise gain one to one? Where if I was to gain an attribute, I also gain one dot expertise. And keep the experience purely to skills. It's you know it's a a level progression that would not really impact things until you get to super high level games anyway, where you'd probably max out your expertise before you max out all your attributes. But uh, well, you would, but it would uh, you would have maxed out expertises on everything in uh, the order of getting to level forty. But the problem with that is that. Uh, if you're able to just get a point in an expertise, you start at eight attributes. And so by the time you gain four more attribute points, you already have an expertise maxed out. And you just use that expertise for just about everything. I mean, at least in that regard, wouldn't that be something that the storyteller would keep in check? Because... You know, let's just say I decide to max out my fight expertise. I can't solve all my problems with fighting. I yeah, mean, you can solve most of them. You can solve most of them, but there'd be consequences. Like if I decide to, you know, go up to the mayor and decide, challenge me to a duel, you fool, and then just like punch them in the face so hard they go over to the next town. We're probably not going to accomplish what we wanted to. Well, probably not. But again, we, we can't look at this in a vacuum. Uh, we're thinking about this in terms of a part like party balance. Mm -hmm. So this also means that you could have someone with maxed out fight. You could have someone with maxed out logic, someone with maxed out social, someone with maxed out adventure. And all of a sudden, like, you know, they just all hyper specialize immediately just in a four person party. And they all have a maxed out expertise role on whatever their specialty is. So you... Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, that's the thing is that you're, de we're dealing with a party here. You know, you're going to have everybody specializing their own ways. I um, would say as a, you know, and I realize this is me adding my own complicating layers and something that should be simplified. But what about if, like, let's just go hypothetically down the, you know, milestone path for expertise. Um, because I guess similarly, like what's stopping me from just like putting all my dots into body and, you know, trying to specialize my character that way. I'm assuming, you know, again, storyteller would probably incor incorporate things that would be more mind, soul, vigor, willpower in there as opposed to just body. Well, the thing is, is that, uh, your body and mind and soul and all that are also your defensive, mm. uh, they're offensive and defensive. So if you have your body, if you have your body up and you get hit uh, with something on your level, that is uh, something that uses mind as its defense. Uh, you're going to get eviscerated. Hmm. But you could do that. Like, let's say you wanted to, like, you know, be be Machop or Machoke or something like that, and have like max out your body as fast as possible, which you know would make sense. But it would also mean that you're going to get mauled if you get hit with special stuff. But if you get your hands on something you know, you win. Yeah, I would say just as a hypothetical, what if as a starting character, you're the highest any expertise could go would be. Um, let's just say two. Um, as a starting character, you can't put any, you know, of the dots you get in expertise. You can't put no more than two in any dot. Or any expertise. And then so, once you reach, 
Uh, let, let me finish. Uh huh. Just as a, a hypothetical. So what if? Okay, yeah, you were capped at two dots per expertise um, as a starting character. When you get to level ten, that cap goes up to three dots. When you get to level twenty, that cap goes up to four dots. And when you get to level thirty, it's ca you know the cap's unlocked. So you're by the level you are gating how much people could spam into an expertise, but you're still giving them milestone. And you're allowing them to specialize a little bit, but keeping things well-rounded. So, as far as that goes, um, one, we don't have levels. Uh, we have and... an HP token. Yeah, we have an HP total, but uh, I guess we could use that. Uh, what I was thinking with the 321 is uh, a system where you need to have four expertises at one dot before you can move one of them to two dots. And then you would need to have four at two dots before you can move to three. I kind feel of like, accomplish, I, kind I feel, of accomplish I feel like we're I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you first. I was gonna say I feel like we're taking the fact that it's complicated and we're adding more complication layers to it Probably. in an attempt to simplify it. Yeah. Because that's what both of your uh you know, uh, things are kind of doing. You're like, you're taking one problem and we're kind of like exchanging it for another. No, um, valid. I just feel like the bit, the, I feel like adding an entirely different kind of experience point to add is the worst solution in terms of just managing characters and progressing them. Uh, I was against adding a specific extra special XP, but we also couldn't, it was the best way that we could figure out to do it without making it so that way everyone would just spam expertise. I will say I will probably give it, a, I will probably give it a night for, like for me, I'll probably want to, I want to kind of want to put more time to thinking about it, but just kind of like, I'm, I'm I see kind of where you're going with it, but like I said, I, I, I want to pretty much give some extra time to, extra time to thought um on that because i'm still kind of 50 50 on it um because like for me it's like how um it, it's just it, feel, it just kind of feels like it's another thing to it's more things to track and on and, and i know that the i know that the character sheet is not complete but it's kind of the idea of like how the you know essentially kind of like in in the future design of improving the character sheet and everything and readability it's it is kind of a concern because it might be a lot more to kind of keep track but like i said but yeah. i will kind of i want to say like that is something i want to kind of i want to like let it incubate here and you know before i have my full like <coughs> yeah my full critique on it and this is also why i mentioned multiple times that like you know you only gain merits at the end of an adventure and so that would also be when, like, you know, you'd get, uh, there's a little XP bonus for also finishing an adventure. But uh, you'd be getting that, you'd assign your merits, and then you'd ignore it for the next, like, however yeah. many sessions it takes for you to complete an adventure. So, he, you guys say that it is something to keep track of, but it really isn't. Because you just put in the new totals and forget it. Like you can you can go several sessions without even looking at it at all. Um, it, it, it's something that will not matter after you put it in there. I would say, at least for me, it's something that I would kind of have to play test because as someone who's being introduced to this like abby to this like the, the concept of this like rule system for the very first yeah. time at least in terms of the merits you've confused the hell out of me yeah and you're the ones yeah. that freaking designed it yeah, yeah this is, uh, it's partially because we're we're kind of like both trying to explain it but this is also why 
uh remember how when we were talking about like you know me me showing you the route system like all right we're gonna sit down and i'm just gonna explain it to you and we're gonna all go through the document together the document isn't the best but at least it gives you something to visually look at while i explain it yeah um so that is why i still wanted to do like the the row sit down thing when you both were free yeah like and like and that's why i'm kind of like I'm only because, kind of giving my in my initial reaction. It's just one I kind of want again. I just need some time to kind of digest the information here. So, yeah. which is also why, uh, like, I was trying to give you as much context as possible because it's hard to judge things in a vacuum without understanding the rest of the entire rule set to understand. Oh, okay, so this is why this is like this. Yeah, like here. Right. And I, I guess it's just more or less of like, because like, I, I think it's just more or less for personally, like, it's just more or less the, uh, there's just so many, th like so many other things and I'm like trying to keep up as well. Yeah, so it's just, it's just like, needed. yeah, it's just more or less in context. So I think that is something, and I will agree with you, Seda, it is something that I think it sounds, it sounds complicated than it is. So it, it is something that if we are like, just play test doing a you know in character creation to see how how easy the understandability is and just kind of like time a little bit to kind of like sit down on it but like like i said just kind of the, that's just kind of my immediate reaction at the time at, at this time i i will say that anecdotally uh because obviously this is anecdote but uh in the play tests that i'm a part of the people who like you know we're completely new to it as well once they like actually sat down and like started playing with it they picked it up really fast yeah so far so, that, that's the thing is that while yeah it's definitely a lot of information that we're dumping on you guys and i'm sure that doesn't help but in practice People have been picking it up with no problem. Both of the games that are currently running with it, uh, some of them got confused at the start, but as soon as we started playing, they understood it. Oh no, I understand the um, I kind of understand what you guys are going for. You know, at the end of like you know an adventure or a session, I would be rewarded merits and experience, and I can spend the merits on expertise, and I can spend the experience on skills. Like, I, I, like, like uh, now you've not lost me, but I think it's a... I think the design of the system might be complicated, but I kind of want to give that a personal playtest before I give a final judgment, because I... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of... That's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Yeah, I, I will say that, look, I, I, I hate having, uh you know, red XP and blue XP as much as anyone... But after many a night discussing what we could even do and a bunch of different things, including uh, partially merit-based, uh, not merit-based, sorry, uh, uh, milestone-based uh, off of attributes, because that was um, one of my suggestions. Uh, me and Zim had many, many discussions over what we could do, and this was the, the best one that we could figure out. Yeah, we definitely had a long, a lot of long discussions on this. I, I still heard... hate having <laughs> red flavored XP and blue flavored XP, but like, uh, it is something here as well. Yeah. Oh, also that. Uh, uh, Spike. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome on in. Good to have you join join in the fleet here tonight. Hope you're all having. A, I hope you're having a wonderful Friday here. Um. Also, I will. I I assume that you both have been playing your game still while we're doing while we've been discussing this. Correct. That definitely and doesn't help. <laughs> like that's yeah. that's what again that's what I'm kind of saying. Like I I kind of want to just kind of let it. I mean also that I've been like streaming for like six hours now. Oh. Um, 
Yeah, I, well, that's why I'm just saying, like, let me take some time to digest it before I get my fully critique. This is just kind of like yeah. initial reaction on it. Like, so it, it's just like for for me, it's like I see where this is going, and I can understand. Like, I understand the uh, where and how why it was designed like that. But it's just kind of like more or less of like I think it's more or less. I think you'll understand it once I actually do it. You know, like once if I'm able to actually do. You know, do the process and able to kind of like what get walked through. Yeah, I think it. I think I that wanted to have the night where we just did that. And actually, I was also gonna ask, sweetheart, how long are you gonna be going on for? Um, I might. I mean, honestly, I. I I might be I might go on a little bit longer here because I, All right, cause, um, I I'm thinking I might just um end my stream but I will send the beans over to you. Like bean transfer. Woo! Heck, I mean, are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. Look, look, sweetheart. I've been I, I've been going for four four hours and um. I mean, I'm just I'm just I'm just heck. Send the beans, Seda. Pardon? I said, send the beans. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send him the beans, and I'm gonna give him the bappers. <laughs> Don't. Wait. That, that, that's how bean transfer, right? You just like get bappers instead if you already have beans. Just get bigger bappers. Bigger bappers. Big, bigger bappers. TM also, bappers. Said, said, Bill, thank you so much for the follow, and again, welcome on to the. Good to have you join in the fleet here tonight. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Friday. I mean, like, I mean, <laughs> sorry, so, this... yeah. go what's ahead. Up? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Um, yep. I... oh, what was I going to say? Yeah, well, no, like, look, don't, don't, don't let the fact that I've been playing, like, my, my city builder game on the side, um, have anything to do with just the merits of discussion, because I, I understand where, where, what you're doing. I understand mm -hmm. the system entirely, and I see your reasoning for going down that route as opposed to a more milestone-based one. I, I just personally disagree with it but not enough to the point where i want to like you know argue till you know the cows come home to about why it should be milestone as opposed to you know giving out a separate xp um i just also just mainly want to since i kind of feel a little bit different i want to make sure the idea is being properly challenged because mm -hmm. yeah, i'm in, in in a vacuum in a vacuum i would have gone down the other route but i'm not so strong willed about it that i will Constantly, constantly argue about it. I would, I would kind of want to personally reserve judgment for that until I've played with it a little bit more and kind of think about, okay, hey, could the system be better? Um, so, at least for my two cents, I feel like I definitely, like as we've previously discussed, keep the expertise. I feel they add a wonderful um, amount of rarity into how you can role play. But I'd probably lean towards making the ex expertise more milestone based like attributes as opposed to giving them a separate experience point. But I think how you guys are doing is also not not too shabby. Yeah. Like and again, like I feel like it's better. It, it, this is it, essentially we can. Yeah, we can just talk about it all day, but it's more or less like I feel like it just might be just like once it's actually like in action, essentially, I want to see how it how it works in action. Because I would actually ask one other other question. Sure. Because I see, I see, like that you, you know, and again, like you know, there shouldn't be like a full judgment or everything. But um, I see that the um the merits, you know, they take up a huge chunk of the um character sheet. Do you foresee merits just being a sole experience point kind of um currency or? Are you going to get merits in different things? Like maybe I do a so, thing and I get awarded merits in cunning as opposed to fight. That is actually something that I wanted to bring up as well for discussion. Um, 
currently you get merits you know you do something cunning you get merits in cunning um what i'm wondering uh is an alternative of just you just have merits and you just have x you or you have merits and then you have xp they are two separate they, they you know red xp blue xp um but I did want to run that by you as well, Taldarius, of just a uh, storyteller at the end just is like, okay, you get five uh, merits, and then you can, instead of it just being ten merits per dot, it would be ten times the amount that you're trying to go, or the dot you're trying to go to, just like skills. Um, okay, you know, here, I'm gonna, just, just give me a second. Uh, you guys can discuss. I just need to find something real quick. I would just say it as an initial reaction. Please, for the love of Arceus, do not assign different merits based off of the different expertise. I Look, I already had enough problem about the complicating aspect of, you know, having merits over just straight experience. Do not make different merits for different things. Holy heck no. Well, no, that's how it works right now. That's why there's the different boxes. That's why I'm saying what are you guys we can thinking? simplify it. What are you guys uh, thinking? Because we needed something that would work really, like, that would work without blowing up the balance. So That's why we made a specific note about that. To, okay, to explain why I did that in the first place. The expertises were meant to be a reward for role-playing towards that particular thing. The original idea was... You go on this adventure, you spend, like, you might have one character that just did a whole bunch of fighting. He was just beating up everybody and beating down the door, kicking over the table, etc., etc. They'd get, uh, at the end of the adventure, they'd get all of their merits in fight. Uh, meanwhile, you got another player that was being stealthy they were also doing a lot of talking to the townsfolk to figure out what's going on with the adventure. So they would get a uh, split between cunning and social merits. Um, that was the original intention. On paper, it, it's one of those things that on paper, it sounded fun. It sounded good. In practice... It's a little too complicated. Great. Just that's on paper, why that's, uh, it's complicated. It, well, it on is, paper, that's why we had the, the boxes for it. Yeah. On paper, it yeah, it was a little complicated, but not as complicated as I thought. It, it didn't seem as complicated as it actually turned out to be. Um... So that's why I am saying, that's why we're revisiting it. That's why this is a play test. It's like, okay, we're going to back away from that idea and maybe simplify it even more. Yeah, I would, I would just say, I would, I would encourage you to heavily simplify it. Yeah. Um, cause, um, mm. yeah, I have issues enough with just the separating out the merit and experience for expertise and skills but you know i also see very valid reasoning for that logic but i feel like having different you know merits for different or separating out the merits is a step too far um just because yeah no i totally understand about you wanting to reward certain kinds of play styles but that also, in one sense, helps snowball certain play styles, as opposed to encouraging people to become more well-rounded. And yeah. I, well, I it is noted in the doc that that is uh, part of the intent. Yeah, the intention was to prevent it be from snowballing. Like most of the time, you're not going to like. That was an example I gave, 
But most of the time, you're not going to have somebody that's literally just fighting everything they see throughout the course of an adventure. You're going to have them doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. They might have a focus on fight, but they're going to be doing other things than just kick in the door, punch the old lady, knock over her table, smash her vase. You're not going to have that. Are you um, sure? Have you met some players? Okay, I was, I fair was about point. To say, murder hobos don't count. <laughs> I will. Mur mm. If you're if you're doing a murder hobo game, maybe don't use the system that's supposed to support RP stuff. I would. You know? I would. I would suppose that might be to the discretion of the DM to reward it. I from kind of what I'm hearing from that. What uh, the original? Yes. Currently, I would say then, oh yeah. Uh, currently, the way that we were doing it was the storyteller says, okay, you guys got five merits. Uh, the players would then be like, I'm going to put... I, 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 the players would then be like, okay, I did a lot of cunning stuff. I did some innovation. I did some logic. Uh, so they're going to do... They would tell the storyteller, I'm going to put three in cunning... Uh, two in instinct, or two in innovation, one in logic. And then the storyteller would be like, yep, that sounds good. That's or they the could adjust it. Um, well, the three, two, one is a different thing, but yeah. Well, no, but that's um, literally, you said five and then did the three, two, one. Well, true, true. Um, anyways, uh, the point that I'm getting at Putting that aside, because we all agree it's too complicated. What I'm asking, do we make it where the expertises are 10 times the dot that you're trying to go to? Just like skills. Um, all right. So one problem that I have with that, and I, I'm not going to read out my math document, but I did bring it up just to, um, you know, like put it in context. Um, the total XP that you would need in order to give every single skill a dot, like, you know, just in general, because we're assuming, you know, oh, hey, the expertise is the way that they work, is that you can apply them almost to anything so long as you have, you know, that, right? That's the current. Varies. Yes. I want you to focus. I want you to channel your emotion. I know you have them. <laughs> okay. In that case, it takes 50 XP oh boy. to make it so that way you have a dot in everything. So the general equivalence of a rank and expertise going up is 50 XP. However, this gets exponentially more expensive to go up to the next rank. To get all your skills to two, that's 225 XP. To get them to three is 465. Okay, what does that have to do with my suggestion regarding the expertise is you asked if we wanted to make it so it was 10 xp per no no not xp merits we're still keeping okay, the merits you, you said X, you said xp so that's why i brought up yeah. a doc because you said xp and i'm like absolutely wait <laughs> no no i'm saying they function similar to the skills in how you okay Forget what I said. I'll clarify. Do we want to do it where it is 10 merits per for the expertises and just do away with the specific merit uh, types? All right. And how much do you want them to get per adventure under this system? I would say... Mm, 
I would say it's a, still up to the storyteller. All right, but what is your... Uh, the what recommended your will standard? be five. Recommended is five. So... You get five per the total cost. Um, so at base, we have one. We have eight of them. Three of them will be at one rank. So three of them need to go from what? I know what you're doing. You're doing math. I don't know why you're doing math or what it has to do with whether we should go it this way or not. I'm attempting to see how many, under that expectation, how many sessions would it take to get something to max on the, uh, in terms of your expertises. Okay. That is what I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. To make sure that we're keeping it, like, you know, because one of the reasons that we had denied this idea previously was because we felt it would allow people to jack it up too fast so i didn't have it written down and i don't remember what it is so i want to see what the session count is so the total cost would be 20 so while he's calculating that seda what do you think of that idea <sighs> So basically, where skills would be five times the level you want to get it into, expertise would be ten times the level you want to get it into for merits. Yes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the answer would be 84 sessions, assuming you started with a dot in the expertise in character creation. So it would be 84 sessions to get one to max. Okay, so the specific amount doesn't matter to me as much. Like, we can bump that up to 10 if it's feeling too slow. Right. I'm more well, looking at no, the idea of the doing it this way versus another. Mm -hmm. Ole, yeah, I like being dragon. Thinking. I said Olay because uh, somebody dropped a hat on me. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so... Hmm. Nick, do think for the pet pets? I would pet still... Pets prefer if we had a mechanic that would encourage them to uh like you know spread it out a little bit but in terms of the actual uh like idea behind it it, it is still a sound idea and i know the reason we got to the um like assigning the merits to the different things was specifically to try and get them to spread it out but you know it is a bit much yeah yeah, no, it's it's a very. I can understand the nuance of the entire discussion because, you know, on the one side, we're all in agreement that, you know, one of the advantages of this kind of dot based system for the RPG is that, you know, you have a core attribute about your characterization, you have that expertise that you lean into, and then you have a, a certain skill. So, it having that expertise in the middle opens up a lot of playability options in terms of how you want to role play and approach a situation. Um, and taking the expertise out entirely, you know, is a, I think we all agree is a pretty negative move that limits the um, creativity that the system is trying to 
uh, invoke in the first place. Yeah, it limits a lot of expression. Um, and I think we're all in agreement that, you know, we don't want to necessarily have someone just max out their an expertise in, let's just say, like logic or fight right away and, you know, not be at least a little well-rounded because I would imagine that if you get to session 50, that the difficulties of certain challenges might require you to have at least a basic amount of logic or basic amount of teamwork uh, to be able to do certain actions with the group. Um, but in terms of how to handle how quickly people get that expertise and how quickly they are to, you know, rank up those expertise is the problem at hand. And there seems to be two very valid solutions around it um, that each have their own merits. Because we could, on the one side, just kind of keep it as a... Um, I said merits, even though we're calling them merits. Yeah, that's English. why I went for badum badumts. That's why I did that. <laughs> and I did that unintentionally. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but... <laughs> Yeah, like, um, on one side, you have the solution as is, which you are awarded merits that you can spend as experience in expertise. Um, or you can spend on advancing your expertise. Um, which, yeah, definitely, I'm in the camp of, if you do go down that road, do not have different merits for different expertise. That's just going to overly complicate things. But, um... Having, you know, a certain XP curve does help, you know, alleviate some of it where, okay, hey, it would take me uh, 25 merits to level up my fight to, um, or sorry, it'd take me 50 merits to level up my fight to max, but I could easily spend that and level up, like, um... Like adventure you take something and something from one dot to three dots. Yeah, I could take one something from one dot to three dots, or like you know, two things to two dots. Because I'm assuming you have one dot in everything. No, you start off with um, five of them are empty, and three of them you have dot one dot in at character creation. Okay, you get so three basically, expertise points at at character creation. Yeah, so like I I could you know as opposed to getting a max out fight, I could bring like cunning to two and logic to one. You know, like, I can do well, a lot more for well-rounding my character by spending that merits elsewhere. Yeah, it'd be two uh, two expertises you could put to two, and then one you could put to one. Yeah, yeah. In exchange for maxing out your main expertise. Um, and then on the other side, you have the the milestone kind of idea where if you were to kind of give the attributes as a measure of soft level for a character, you could unlock, you know, the ability to purchase higher expertise at higher levels, quote unquote. Um, which, adding on to that, there's not a bad merit of, essentially, since attributes are milestone of, of a sort, um, essentially, having a box in there where it'd be like, okay, well, hey, you are player level 25. So your total attributes of body, mind, soul, vigor, and willpower should equal up to 25 or That's something HP. like that. Uh, HP is a culmination of all your attribute points. Okay. Um, well, I guess at that point, you know, have your expertise unlock at a certain HP level. So maybe your HP, you know, 20 you can unlock the level 3 so and so like you know what however you want to balance it but you could lock you know certain higher tiers of expertise behind hp level one thing that i'm wary about when it comes to that is how quickly all of them would be basically maxed to level cap very fair but i would i would also kind of ask on the flip side there you calculated out that you know based off of like how many merits you're to award per session 
um, you would um, get one of the expertise maxed out in like 84 sessions. So basically like a year and a half, roughly. Yeah. Um, um, how, but that's, that's under the mock-up numbers we have. Under right the mock-up. But like, you know, hypothetically, how often would you envision a storyteller giving out attributes? Uh, so Actually, again, that's that's something so, kind of just long up to them. Attributes are entirely up to the storyteller. Uh, for example, uh, the Wednesday game is seven sessions in, and we have had an attribute increase already. We've had Meanwhile, uh, the Friday game is 11 sessions in, and we have not had an attribute game. Uh, so we probably uh, and, 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 and likewise, how much merits have you guys been given in both sessions? Uh, we've only had one merit increase so far. We're likely to have another one in the Wednesday game, but so far we've only had one merit increase. I don't know about the, the other one. The Friday game, we have had 15 merits so far. And how much of that has, like, translated to actual, like, expertise increase? Uh, not Other... at all, except for, um, Toshime's character, where, like, the rest of us spread out our expertise merits across the various expertises. However, Toshime just went with ten and one and five and another. And Kerr allowed that, and so... Toshime leveled up one of his. Hmm. Uh, it is important to remember that, uh, you know, there's uh, a total of, uh, what was it? Uh, there's 37 possible expertise increases, and there is 42 attribute increases, so it's it's fairly parity. Uh, the, the, the parity is, is fairly similar between the two mm -hmm. in terms of overall possible progression. Yeah, so I at least would say with the answer at hand, or with the question at hand, I feel like a, since expertise probably shouldn't be, like, spammed as much as skills, understandably, I think the 10 from a value sounds reasonable. 10 times, you know, skill, or like the dot level uh, for a merits cost. But I think considering how on parity they are in terms of attribute and expertise with the... You, sa you said it was like, what, 40, 38 versus 42? Uh, it is 42 versus 37. 37. Five I difference. Believe. Like, yeah. I, I, I think that at least for a revisited subject might increase uh, the, the potential, dare I say, merit... <laughs> Damn, you may be aware of that now. <laughs> uh, I apologize but, for nothing. But I, I, I think it increases the merits of potentially revisiting the expertise as something more milestone based as opposed to um, like a, you know, like ex a one, like, experience based. Yeah. So what we could do on that. Um... I'd have to look at the exact numbers, but what we could do is come up with another expertise and because then because I don't like the idea of getting to that end game and not have not having the, you know, you got several uh, potential attributes that you level up that you don't get an equivalent expertise point because you've maxed out all of your expertise at that point. Um, which, to be fair, most campaigns are just not going to get to that point. 
nor do I necessarily want, you know, people to have them all maxed out, but we could possibly come up with an extra expertise, which would possibly, then... and I, yeah, I feel like we're fairly stretched on those for now, but you yeah, know, like, I think you I, might like, be I kinda... right. We like I feel like it just switch to the uh, the milestone. Yeah, I mean, and the mm -hmm. one of the kind of like points I was making earlier is that like, yeah, the you know, a character being you know essentially HP forty would be so fringe for most campaigns that like trying to worry about balance at that level, you know, is almost a moot point because you 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 probably already have like. You know, you probably have like a good at least third of your skills max. You, you have you probably have the attributes and um, expertise you really care about maxed out already. So it's kind of like getting extra ice cream when you've already had ten scoops. Like I'm not going to complain about more ice cream, but like I'm not going to care. Oh wait, you forgot the sprinkles. All right, we're gonna go ahead and switch the the expertise to milestone. I like that idea. Well. I don't necessarily like it, but it does make sense. It does work. Hey, at least try um, it. Like if it if it finally comes too simple or like adjust the power balance too much, then like yeah, go back to like this experience or essentially the merit. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to kind of have like the ability to kind of either be both points based or like XP based or milestone, right? Mm -hmm. So it just kind of I, I just think that it just adds more of that flexibility either way. Yeah, I do oh. think we're going to have to put, if we're doing it milestone, obviously, we have to put gates on expertise. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. And I think you're you're using HP as that gate mechanic since it is a pseudo level for a character of sorts. Like, I think that actually is a can be a very elegant way to put a gate on it where you can like, you know, I can kind of actually imagine on the character sheet, you can kind of just put like a little, you know, let's just say like 10, 20, 30 over the expertise to be like, well, hey, you can't get this until your level or HP 10. You can't get this until your HP 20 or whatever the number you want it to be. Yeah. So you right. have like HP of that would, yeah. Be, um, would be. Yeah, you have yeah. to attach. You have to attach some sort of requirement to that. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I think HP uh, like gating quick. it is. Hmm? Uh, Mirai, it's all right. Uh, if you want to go ahead and call it and finish this, uh, later, Mirai, that's okay. Oh, oh, <gasps> Electro, Electro Shocker, hello, welcome on in. Thank you so much for the air raid. How you doing? Hang on, let me go ahead and give you a shout out here. I'm so sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, welcome on in, welcome on in. My name's, uh, for those... <laughs> For those who just uh, for those who are new here, my name is A. Danny Wolf. My I am um, I'm a variety streamer right here as well. Uh, current, oh, yeah, also the thank you to whoever did the shout out there. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah, right now uh, we do a lot of variety games here as well. Tonight we're just going to do it. We're just kind of uh, chillaxing here. Uh, we kind of just did a little bit of Boulder's. Uh, we did some Boulder Skate, uh, but now we're just kind of winding down, doing some uh, Stardew down Stardew <laughs> Stardew Valley with some wonderful, wonderful beans here as well. Um, we're currently we're just talking about some tabletop uh, tabletop mechanics as well um, with our table you know, for our, for the new system here for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. But other than that, though. Uh, Electro, if you need to go and take a rest or do the, all the self-care, please, 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 please do so as well. Self-care is always number one here as well. And most importantly, I hope you had a wonderful night here as well. Um, I saw that you were actually doing some music there as well. So I really do hope that you were doing some, uh, you are, you know, hope, I really do hope that you were able to make some.
it's in the oh, but ahead, sorry. In the of not ruining your th your third floor, I could <laughs> just withhold it. <laughs> Much to Kia's disappointment. I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, it's just more or less the question is how 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 much of a how 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 broken do you want? How broken do you want it? Oh, how, how, it's more or less of how how bad uh, it's it's more or less. Oh my gosh, brain, brain, please work. <laughs> like, I mean, just, I mean, it's that. I mean, that is. I mean, I, I, at this point, I think you haven't even said it, and I'm already, I'm already like, I don't brain. <laughs> I just, mean, we could find out. Oh, I, I. Sweetheart. Yes. I see that face. I see that face. What? The heck? Ah. Two are so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I'm... before we continue, <laughs> sorry. Um, I am coming up on the six hour mark, so I'm going to split up the recording. And uh, no spirit ferret, uh, we won't be taking any other slots tonight. Sorry. Make sure you come by next week. Uh, hopefully we'll be up for that uh, next week. But. Let me go ahead and split up my recordings real quick. I'll just mute and deafen real fast. I'll be right back. Now, see, the evil thing would be for me to, like, actually start singing now. So Zim no. gets back to a completely broken Abby. No, I want to hear it. Wait, wait. <laughs> I mean, I, but, I, I mean, I'm also really curious. All right. Give but, me just a moment. Please don't do that yet. I want to I want to be there for it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today so far on this Art Martin stream, where we were also working on our Rouse system. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Mastodon, Patreon, and more. There on the website, as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. It is your support that allows the streams to continue to be brought to you all. I cannot do this without you guys. Uh, consider becoming a uh, consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by simply sharing the stream around. But for now, thank you so much for joining, and I bid you all the most fondest, a duke.